for the, all the time I was riding BMX. I liked cars. I didn't have money. Oh Every single night I would go out streeting, jumping fences to get scrap tires, get home three o'clock in the morning. Weird thing for me as an Aussie, getting a car, that's a freaking supercar to me. If you have a Corvette in Australia, you got a supercar me. What? The main thing influencing the US drift scene is obviously Formula Drift and a lot of the courses are asking for a, a pull in. You know, I think drifting will eventually get to the point where there's absolutely no reason that both cars won't be coming in absolutely 90 degrees. Why aren't people in America more people that don't have the money out buying Crown Vicks. Dooring is not putting dents in a car. If you're putting dents in a car, you're crashing into your friends. Where would you say you rank yourself as far as driving skills? Correct? And the Speedway <laughs> just, they couldn't give a rat's about drifting. You know, the news and stuff had been told about the place getting put for sale before I'd ever found out about it. Do you ever so, see yourself like possibly moving to the US? Yeah. Well, are you going to take the Nofa spot in FD? I did send him a message. I said, put me in, coach. <laughs> they said that I couldn't do it, so I went and did it. W's only, you know I've been. Welcome back to the number one drift podcast on YouTube. I am Dawson, and we have a special one here today <laughs> getting attacked <laughs> by Jasper. Uh, but this is Luke Fink. Uh, most of you guys probably already know him. Um, but before we get into it, I do want to say. Uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification uh, so you never miss out on an episode or anything like that. Um, but that's pretty much all I have for the intro. So, yeah, <laughs> while g'day, you're... <laughs> g'day guys, how's it going? Um, happy to be here. Bit of a drive. Yeah. I don't know. I got took on some pretty sick roads I'd like to take my car off on. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I don't... I try to remember the names. I'm too tired now. I drove overnight to get here. Um... I don't know, but there was roads where it said, don't take trucks. And I'm like zigzagging through there with my long truck and not so long trailer. But I'm like, dude, I'm going yeah. to I'm about to take the car off and have a <laughs> sesh here. So no, good fun. There, there are some good ones around here. You came, which direction was it again? I guess <laughs> from Virginia. Virgi oh, across. okay. Yeah. So I guess I, it took me yeah, you got south kind of early. Roads. And so I came through a lot of stuff. Hell yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot of people on the road too, I'm sure. Absolutely no one out there, no. Sick. I was the truck. <laughs> the Corvette's sitting a little bit Hell sideways yeah. on the trailer now. <laughs> oh, so, just I was getting it. Around. Yeah, I was getting it. Oh. Uh, you know how Hell it is. yeah. Well, you just came from No Coast, right? No Ooh. Coast? Uh, Tandem X. Tandem X. Okay, that's yeah. what it was. How was yeah. that? That was sick. It was like, it, it was like essentially over with a skid pan in the middle um, out there. Uh, God, I forget the name of the place. They've just... <laughs> Bought it like a year ago and mm. starting to run drift events out there. So, oh, Southampton. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, no, they had a great little layout out there. It was super fun. Like, I actually had way more fun than I expected. And then, unfortunately, Sunday, it just rained yeah. and rained and rained and rained. So, I ended up booking out there, you know, in the afternoon. Every time it rains here, man, it just, it rains for like a month straight. And yeah. It stops for a little bit. It definitely didn't feel like it was going to stop. <laughs> Yeah, you said you were loading everything up in the rain. Yep, loaded up in the rain. There's nothing else you can do. You know what <laughs> I, I mean, mean, yeah. I'm faking it till I make it. I'm open trailer, just <laughs> my kids in the rain trying to help me load up. And yeah, it was uh, very, very <laughs> uncomfortable. About as grassroots as it gets, I'd say. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so tell me, uh, what all are you in the States doing for such a long period right now? Having fun. Having fun. <laughs> Faking it till we make it. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably the best way. Um, but no, just hitting a bunch of events. Uh, obviously, uh, with Adam. I've known Adam for quite a while now. <coughs> Excuse me. And, you know, so we've got a relationship. So, you know, he's keen to have me come out to his events and stuff like that. So that's been quite fun. Because, again, like uh, we were talking about just before the podcast is my biggest thing. Is, what I love is visiting new places. Yeah. New places, new people. You know, especially if you get to hang out a little bit and get to know uh, the area a bit, but to know the people and their lifestyle, it's definitely, um, you know, probably the, the most fun part of drifting yeah. for me is like, obviously the driving's fun, but like, I really, really love the new places, new people thing. That's what you know, I'm trying to get to, man. Meeting new lifetime best friends. Yeah. I've never even been outside the country. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> There's plenty to see here. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you've been here all your life. I've Pretty much, I would say, been around most of the country. Yeah, but just outside the country now. I would say at this point now, I've probably been to more tracks than a vast majority of American drifters. Yeah, I now. would say. 
you've made a, a killing in that aspect. Yeah. Um, but well, speaking of Adam, though, how how did that relationship kind of come to fruition? I guess. Uh, well, I had my track Archfield Drift Park in in uh, Brisbane, uh, and we're always one thing I'd always done with I was running uh, state. Uh, sorry. Um, events all over the country and you know you always especially down in australia it's like getting in international guests and known people was you know a big thing for australians because yeah. you just don't have that access to people and and you know a lot of people especially ones like adam etc seem so far away you know what yeah. i mean and the chances of you know an aussie coming over and running into them somewhere so that opportunity for people so we brought over a ton we, we were bringing over chelsea before he was on, well, just before he was on Ford. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn, so I've known Chelsea know. for quite some time. Back when he was still a BMW boy, we had Chelsea over to Australia. We had Matt Field Sick. over to Australia back yonks ago. I had yeah. him over at my events. Now, um, Naoki Nakamura, his first event outside of yeah. Japan. He had to get his passport to come to Australia. <laughs> so that was his first event outside That's of awesome. uh, Japan. Yeah, we've had an absolute massive list. But these days, it's the YouTubers that are pulling the crowd oh, yeah. so i from a business set so i was like right we're gonna start getting some youtubers and yeah i ended up getting to chat to adam and luckily adam's a bmx guy i'm an yeah. ex world champion bmx rider and he had you know noticed my name from bmx and had followed some of my stuff from you know guess when he was a kid <laughs> watching yeah, me yeah. kind of old now but um i remember his old bmx days yeah so i was you know doing ago. all of that well, I did X Games and all kinds of shit, so I was definitely around in the BMX scene, uh, and that sort of helped that relationship. And then, mm. yeah, we've been homies ever since. Hell yeah! Yeah, so just chatting away and got him out to. We've had him out to Australia a couple of times. We built him a car out there, which mm. is sort of the replica, which is his car now. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he's got two cars out in Australia, which I had been looking after until just recently, and um, yeah, it's a good little good working relationship oh yeah well cool um the the s13 i i actually i remember watching that whenever you built it what's what's like the major differences between that car and the the original one i guess um probably it's less complicated let's put it yeah we it was quite funny when <laughs> we we're building it um there was a few things. Adam's extremely intricate, you know, and, and mm, hands on tell. with his builds, you know what I mean? And he has a way that he does things. And I was sort of like, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to put a NIS tune in it. Yeah. And I've got a guy, like we have this guy in my city or just down from my city. And he's like, you give him a NIS tune and, and an SR20, man, like you can leave that car for months with oh, 85 wow. in it and turn the key and the thing, boom. Oh, immediately shit, start this too this tune damn i just i had one in my, my yeah. z in there for the rb and i just replaced it with the link but yeah you messed up dude nobody <laughs> around here would tune in this tune that's it's, the thing that's you the need, hard part you need someone that can tune it but yeah. like you know i don't know if you saw the footage of that car he was very mm. just sat the thing on limit of the whole trip you yeah. know and we essentially did drift week before drift week was a thing with that we yeah. we did multiple events including going street drifting and stuff like that and that car did not skip a beat. And <laughs> it was on limiter, I would say, 95% of the time it was drifting. Dude, and awesome. thing was minty, so. That's brownie points with an SR. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. That that guy that tunes our stuff is just good. And yeah. Niz Tune, you don't really throw rockers with Niz Tune. So that's why you stick with the Niz Tune yeah. on an SR, in my opinion. That's when you're not yeah. going too crazy. No, that's, that's interesting because you don't ever hear that around here just because the lack of tuners. Or yeah, lack of tuners, I guess, but more so with a lot of your uh, aftermarket stuff. They have different hard cut, different limiters that will throw rockers. Oh, okay. That's the, probably the biggest thing. So, that's yeah, fair. hell yeah. Well, now you know, yeah. and me too. But <laughs> uh, so, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know you said um, like BMX days back in the day, X Games, all that. Uh, but where did like where was all that started? How did it transfer into drifting stuff like that? Um, I was just a I was actually a country kid. You know, probably from a town smaller than this. Uh, and we ended up moving to the Big Smoke, I guess, and uh, just started riding BMX with buddies. It was just yeah. like, I wouldn't say it, there's definitely people that had much harder upbringings, but my mother was a drug addict and mm -hmm. 
left me, my sister Sorry, and my yeah. dad when we were like three or I was three and my sister was a baby and my dad raised us on his own, but you know, still we were struggling a bit, you know, we ended mm. up living in a trailer park for quite a while, but that's when I really got into BMX because okay. you know, you go ride like, yeah, yeah. That's, nothing matters. Yeah, it's like drifting. Like as soon as you start actually driving, it doesn't matter. Your house could be on fire yeah. or anything. <laughs> You know, and once you're out there throwing the car in it, you do not care. You don't think about anything else anyway. Uh, you couldn't care less. So, yeah, I think it was that, you know, it was, a, it was a good escape. And I think just snowballed with BMX and, you know, the more, you know, I guess uh, I got into it, the more I just loved it more and more and more. And then I loved the traveling aspect of it, you yeah. know, traveling around. And I think that helped me with BMX get my name out when I was younger is because I was just all over the country in Australia, just going to every event I could, whether yeah, it be awesome. a, more so jam events, comps, all of that sort of stuff to just like ride. Cause yeah. that's sort of sort of wanted to do meet new people, ride new places and have fun, you know, more than everything, you know, the, the parties you'd have like BMX part, like <laughs> drifters yeah. are kind of pussies. You know what I mean? Like, sorry, the BMX, the BMX stuff. I do And agree, the thing is, a yeah. lot of drifters come from BMX, and you know. Yeah. That I did. That's the, what, you know, I was, I was never any good at it. But. Yeah. But BMX parties, <laughs> something else, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's, um, you know, it's an amazing times all over the world. That's, that's what you can say on that. But, yeah, we ended up doing a whole bunch of stuff, you know, won everything there sort of was to win in Australia. Um and then, yeah, we sort of made the leap to go over to Europe with a buddy of mine. He actually helped pay for my tickets. Went over there That's and awesome. the very first event I ever did in Europe was the Worlds in Portugal mm. and, yeah, won. Dude. So it was like, it was sick. I uh, went from like completely unknown overseas to winning. I won straight, come third in dirt and fifth in vert. Yeah. How so much it was of like, shell shock was that? I wasn't even going to enter. <laughs> Because I was sitting there, there was a lot of like, you know, I guess imagine just being a, you know, you're known in your country, but you're going out on a world stage. And back then, you didn't have Instagram and, yeah, yeah. you know, just had you're MySpace. The freshman again. No, there wasn't even MySpace back then. This was 2003. Oh, yeah, no. So you were just literally like turning up. Like all you saw was magazines. So you're, you're, you turn up at this place and there's all these huge names and you're just like, Oh fuck! I didn't realize they're this. the guys from the mag. They're the guys from the magazines, you know. They're the guys from my VHSs and yeah. I think just starting to DVD at that point. So it was like insane, and I was more just like just blown away, blown away, and stoked to be there and meeting people. And yeah, my buddy was like, "You got to enter! Like, don't be stupid! Rah rah! That's why we're here." So I'm like, "Well, fuck it! If I'm gonna yeah. enter, I'm gonna end it, enter everything I can." And it worked out fantastic. So. Yeah, that's back when the Euro was good and everything as well. So the prize money was fantastic yeah. and really helped us like get around and ended up going to UK and States and all kinds of stuff. So definitely yeah. sick fun with BMX, but ultimately it was BMX buddies that got me into drifting as well. So I had, gotcha. for, the, for the, all the time I was riding BMX, I had no interest. I liked cars, you know what I mean? But I wasn't, I didn't have money. Yeah. You know, every cent I had, you don't, you every cent I had was just, traveling and going to more places and yeah. you know on, on mates couches and whatever else so it was never a i didn't have any material needs mm -hmm. it was as long as i had my bike with me and you know i could find Simple some food man. and some drinks somewhere i'm i'm pretty good you know <laughs> the more uncomfortable it is the more drinks you need like you, you work it out it balances itself out exactly right um so yeah it wasn't until i was 21 22 which i finally got my license <laughs> Holy shit, really? Yeah. yeah. Damn. So I, I just wasn't just cared about the bike. Yeah. Yeah. I was very like I had a couple of buddies that were like that, honestly. So. <clears throat> and yeah, the again, the reason for getting the car was like I can go to more places and go riding. So, you know, I bought a station wagon so I could fit the bikes in and stuff. And yeah, next minute, every corner, you know. What I mean? <laughs> like, it just spiraled. And uh yeah, I, I started drifting in a, a VL Commodore, which I don't know, you might be able to chuck one up on the screen here, but yeah. a VL Commodore with the RB30 came from. No well, way. Well, it's a Nissan RB30, but they put them in the VL. So yeah. that's what I started out drifting in, automatic, chop springs, and just out with all my um, BMX buddies, which all they all had 240s. But so I you had were the right, runt of the group? Well, I just wasn't that into cars, yeah. so it didn't bother me. Um, and even 
probably when I started drifting, I wasn't like into cars. I hadn't That's done crazy. any research on cars. Like I just bought a station wagon because I could yeah. put bikes in it, you know? So seeing them out drifting everywhere and back then in Australia anyways, before all the Hoon Law stuff and all that, like it, you know, we, we'd be at a set of lights with like four two forties in front and there yeah. was me and another buddy that had VLs and every single one of us had skid through the intersection. It was like, <laughs> this was pre uh, Tokyo Drift, you know what I mean? So oh yeah, this was just like, you know, if you did get pulled over, they'd be like, you're doing burnouts. It's like, no, mate, Not I'm quite. doing drifting. <laughs> and you, you get all mad about it and start back chatting the cop. The cop's like, Confused. Do you want more of a ticket? I don't know. What you- exactly. <laughs> so anyway, that just snowballed. And I ended up getting a 240 myself and ultimately got an R32 four-door, which sort of uh, built my name because I was a real idiot from a sense of, again, I, I guess I got an addictive personality. So like when I get into something, I get into it hard. So yeah. I was literally out every night. Oh every single night I would go out streeting. I would hand strip and fit tires, like jumping fences to get your old, you know, old scrap tires, get home three o'clock in the morning, hand strip and fit some tires to like get on the car so I can drive to work the next morning, work 12, 14 hours, get home, hand strip and fit more, out streaming. Like it was. And you never had any plan at this time or anything too. It was just like just winging it. No, absolutely. I just, I didn't care about comps or (laughs) anything. It was just. I enjoyed doing what I was doing. Like yeah. I just, the getting sideways, the progression, linking extra far corners, you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially a streeting that I don't want to promote streeting, but at the end of the day, like there's definitely stuff you pick. Like you can tell if a dude's a street because there's mm-hmm. just, they get out onto the track and they have a different mentality of the way they attack this a course. A, a different sense of aggression What's, when it comes to their driving style, it well, seems. I look at a course and know where I need to go straight away. Mm-hmm. There's not like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get get that link from there to there. For me, it, especially now, it just feels natural. Mm-hmm. So when I hit a course, like I'm sort of bummed. I, I don't know if you saw the LZ event. I was having yeah. problems with it, but my first run was a chase with Nate. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah. just doored Nate the whole track. It was my very first lap on the track. You, yeah, and I was I was talking a lot about that event with some of my friends too just how impressive that car is. Even Nick Swan's podcast that comes out today, we talked about it. Like how you manage to make a car like that so fast. It really proves that anyone that questions whether a C5 or C6 is probably the best drift chassis, all they have to do is look at what you're doing. I get, you know the hard thing about that chassis, and I think it's a thing that a lot of people probably relate. I know everyone likes, but I, I was around before, like Wisefab was a big thing. Mm-hmm. And when Wisefab came out, everyone just drove it so shit. Like yeah. they drove with huge angle. They would do a weird sort of understeery, slow transition and stuff like that. And I think that's almost like gotcha. where negativity came from it. You know what I mean? Like ah. it's all like, oh, you're wise crabbing and that sort of yeah, attitude. Yeah. I think it's the same thing with Corvettes. A lot of people driving Corvettes are sort of just driving them lazy. Yeah. Like you huck them, they'll huck. You know what I mean? That's all there is to it and you know i guess the problem with a v8 and all that sort of stuff people can you can be super lazy in a corvette and just you know not have yeah. you know super grippy setup and just pedal that thing around it's the easiest one of the easiest drift cars you'll ever drive you know once you got a nice lock kit in it and to an extent i think that's where it, people sort of get a little bit of a negative vibe from corvettes because people yeah. do sort of drive and cruisy i guess yeah yeah drive them like a boat almost yeah honestly yeah more like something like a big soar or something i guess yeah. you just oh, what do you guys call them sc300s uh, yeah yeah so that sort of stuff so but they'll they'll snap hard i, I pretty much relate them weirdly they feel to me it feels like a hundred. Oh, really it feels like a jzx suspension wise like the way the steering oh, wow. feels and that but then you're super low in the car so you kind of feel like you're an fd yeah, it kind so, of does. It feel like you're over the rear tires because talking yeah, yeah. to Josiah, that's what he always said. Yeah, it's. I mean, Z's are kind of the same, like three seventy Z. You're pretty yeah. much sitting with the back wheel right behind you, and that's probably the car I drive the most. So it doesn't feel that weird for me. That's um, fair. but I mean, definitely when I go from like at home, when I go from my JZX to my three seventy, mm-hmm. it definitely you can feel like when you yeah. go from car to car, you feel the difference a lot. Just the way the car <laughs> rotates. 
It always feels way cooler in a car where you sit further back, but four doors are cooler ultimately to look at. Yeah. Four so. doors for life. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. And no one agrees with me here. Four I doors. I love four doors. Wagons or estates. I yeah. Don't know they call them. I love that stuff. But, you know, for weird thing for me as an Aussie, getting a car, that's a freaking supercar to me. <laughs> In Australia, that's <laughs> uh, that's it? no less than a hundred k. No way. In Australia, I didn't realize there was that that's, much. That's that's you. If you have a Corvette in Australia, you go to supercar meets. You don't turn up at a Cars and Coffee. <laughs> what the you fuck? go to supercar meets because they just don't exist. You know, you'll wow. you'll purchase the car. You got to pay for it to get over. You've got all the taxes and stuff, and you yeah. have to legally convert it to right hand drive, which is like sixty grand on its own. Oh fuck! I forgot about that. So yeah. We, those things are like supercars. I remember the first time when I was over here drifting with my G30, not first time over here drifting, but uh, when I was over in my G35 for uh, Drift Week 1. Yeah. And I got behind someone in a C6 Corvette at Apple Valley back when it was still like quite small. And did I shit myself? <laughs> I'm like, that's a Corvette. Like, <laughs> I, I And I started <laughs> getting up on him and I was freaking out. I was like, I don't want to touch this guy's car. Like he's out there in a freaking supercar. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like I literally Optimus stayed here. back. You know <laughs> what I mean? And then I end up buying one because I go onto eBay and the whole rear piece, you can get them for a hundred bucks. Like yeah, the tail light. Cheap as far as that goes. I've seen full sets of tail lights for 50 bucks and I'm regret not buying them now because I finally had tail lights, little tabs on my tail lights break oh, on the weekend. <laughs> um, but yeah, everything's super cheap yeah. like for them. Like most most of the stuff, super cheap for them. Doors like hundred fifty bucks. No like way. Complete doors. Holy so, shit! Well, people aren't out crashing them. Like that's the you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. Like, every like, guy's out there wrecking their S13s, for- wrecking their Zs, all of that sort of stuff. And then I looked it up. I'm like, man, these things are cheap. Yeah. You know, so if you bundle it all together, yeah, they're they, they are. That's that's why I always say they are probably the best drift chassis, yeah, especially well, for someone getting into it. They're already converted. You know. Yeah. Right. They're the S16. Yeah. That's what yeah. I always relate them to. So it, it is an interesting one because I'm very much a JDM boy at heart. You know, I yeah. at home, it's I all agree. it's all Nissans and Toyotas in my house. <laughs> um, but it's like, you know, to me, it was just so cool and, and super car-ish for me. Yeah. But even now, you drive around on the road here and people everywhere are still like giving you shuckers and waving, oh, yeah, giving people, you thumbs up for your core. God damn Corvette. <laughs> Where's your new balances, baby? Well, I got them in the back. <laughs> I really do. No shit. Of course I do. Come on now. Dude, uh, it's awesome. cool. I got my uh, yeah, I got my New Balance. I got one shorts. of those like <laughs> Corvette shirts with all the Corvettes <laughs> on it. I got a Chevy hat. I got the whole. You're wearing kit. that for Halloween, aren't you? I should have worn my jorts. No. Oh. <laughs> I'm big jort guy anyway. Regardless of the Corvette, that's I'm a big funny. jort guy. That's again, that's BMX stuff. You rip your knees, then you cut off. You cut your jeans you off the knees. Just cut the jeans, you know. Yeah, and I got a could, couple of them myself. Yeah, that's life. <laughs> As a BMXer, that's life. Oh fuck! All right, so I guess back on the Corvette a little bit. So tell me how you actually. What are some of the techniques that you use to keep up with some of the cars that are like double the amount of horsepower? I think all of them were at LC. Well, event, right? Yeah, all. every single one of them. Yeah, double wine. Um, double and then some for the most part. Um, just drive. Yeah. Just drive. No, but there's, <laughs> cert- there's definitely things where you, you know, like when you leave a start line, like did you see Rudnick's battle with Adam? Yeah. So I coached the shit out of Rudnick for that run up. Rudnick only had third gear. He didn't shift and he came in on LZ's door. No shit. That was just some technique stuff I worked through with him to get him like... So what did you tell him before the run then? Because Adam's car is fast. You know what I mean? He's yeah, got no excuse not to fire back past him. I said, yeah. just leave the line and just go. I'm like, he'll drive back past you. <laughs> Even if you're three <laughs> yeah, car lengths true. in front, like he's going to drive past. It's yeah. a fun event. You know what I mean? He's not going to stop drifting and be like, oh man, he's too far ahead. I couldn't get back past. No, we're, yeah. we're broing out. You know what I mean? I'm like... Just leave the line and don't look back and go. He'll you'll hear him come back past you, and just flick it onto him. And he did. But I use that same you know style of things, yeah. you know, with my drifting. Um, geez, in Ireland I was even at more of a deficit. I had like a probably two hundred eighty horsepower R thirty two, and I was going against D Mac in that car that yeah. Jimmy just drove, which is 
that car's no, retarded. Yeah. Like in a straight line, that car would have to be a low nine second car. No way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't it was that quick. Oh yeah. Well, it weighs nothing. Oh yeah. There's nothing in it, and the thing just bruh and goes. <laughs> so I think I started about eight or ten car lengths back. Oh. S- similar to what Chelsea tried to do last yeah. night in FD. Yeah. 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 No, I did that. I was way back, and the guy's like waving me. I'm like, nah. I'm send good. It. Let's like, go. <laughs> send it. And I, I was easily, genuinely, like I was at the back of the burnout box, <sighs> and I was like, let's go. And I came through the start line. Like probably top a second, and literally by the time I clicked third, he was like, Rup. he Just was there. Right there you know him. what I mean? And yeah. we flicked in together, and it was sick. You know what I mean? We, I was able to drive a two hundred eighty horsepower car against the absolute yeah. monster and still keep up. So there's there's definitely techniques and just things that I've been mean, been around for a long time. So there's definitely little things you can do. A lot of it, I'm sure, is just second nature for you. And stuff yeah, now, a lot of but... half clutching, and you know, there's definitely spots where you can sacrifice to make overall things better you know what i mean things that are less I've noticeable noticed that and... that's something you're good at yeah so what what are some of the areas that are more obtainable to sacrifice in those instances um there's just areas where you know the lead car's hanging for a bit you know if the lead car's hanging out for a bit you know mm-hmm. if you just hang back a bit there and then slightly shallower and then shoot through Mm-hmm. You're you're gonna end up like in their shit. So yeah, just jumping right in. The I think door. that's definitely you know a good technique that I use a lot. Like if I know that they'll they sort of angle up near the end of that section, it's a great you know, and you can pull up three car lengths there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's all kinds of little techniques and stuff. I use a lot of like half clutching and stuff to get the car to hook up a bit better and things like that as well. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, ton of stuff, you've I guess. You've never been a big sim guy or anything, right? Not at all. No, no. it makes me sick. Dude, fucking right, <laughs> But man. I was out street drifting every night. Yeah. That's, that's, again, I was out street drifting every night. And then, you know, once I have my kids, as soon as I had my kids, I stopped. Yeah. Stopped. Stopped as for the most part. As far as the internet goes. <laughs> yeah, stopped for the most part. Um, And now, but we ha- we, we had the track. Yeah. So, you know, once I'd taken over the track, which I ran, we ran for like six and a half years. So the last six and a half years, even I was drifting twice a week, minimum, Yeah. you know, and driving That's with awesome. everybody. Like I wouldn't, it's funny the whole random tandem thing over here. Cause at our events, we actually had, uh, we had beginner events where there was a start line and you mm-hmm. get let go from the start line. And that's where, you know, you'd say two, three, one, et cetera. Yeah. Our advanced okay. sessions was you accept that you're driving. Like, yeah, there's no there's, flagger, just yeah, go. There's no flagger, there's no like, oh, you know, he tandered with me and rah, rah. It's like, if someone pulls Dude. up on your door and you don't like it, just pull out the way. Otherwise, yeah. like, you're tandeming. I That's the way the advanced sessions like were. Dude, people elevated so fast. You would get so much more seat time. We had no start line. There was no, there wasn't exactly. even, a, we didn't even have a cool down straight. So you'd go out and just smash laps. Yeah. And then, you know, when you'd, and the problem was you'd be in a great tandem, lap after lap, and you, you're watching your temp gauges just like just keep climbing. And things climbing. are starting to flash at you, beep at you, and you're like, "This is so good!" Like I'm having a great time, though. Yeah, exactly right. So that was, uh, you know, seat time yeah. with everything. You know, seat time with the BMX. It was like, you know, I'd, you ride every day. That's how you get good. You ride all the freaking time. Mm. We're drifting. The more time you're in the car, the better you're gonna get. It's just the way it is. Yeah. And obviously, as long as you're not just trying the same thing over and over again, that doesn't work. Yeah. You know? Which you do see a lot. Some people will do the same thing for years and yeah. expect a different result where, yeah, you try everything. Try all the weird shit. Try it. Sometimes, you know, you throw it at the wall and it sticks. Yeah. And and run with it. So, Well, since you you since you owned a track, I'm sure you dealt with a lot of newbie drivers. Yeah, absolutely. Track. That were... was a passion of ours, to be honest. That was okay, cool. our yeah. beginner sessions were huge. We we offered uh, free tuition for oh. um, new drivers, so they'd pay still pay an entry, which was like eighty bucks or like fifty US. Yeah. Um, but we'd have like advanced drivers come out and you know free free tutor them. and help everybody and you know just yeah. do a lot of work with people to try and make it as accessible as possible. How many events of those did you run per year? Uh, back then? We ran four a month. Oh, four a month. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we had a lot like. The scene got so, like, it's, 
without that track has really has killed the scene a lot but we've got another track that's uh, sort of starting to open but it's a big track that's sort of not uh really uh good for beginners um yeah. but there's another place as well that might be opening soon so you know there's still definitely stuff going on there for beginner drivers so it was just that archie was definitely you know you, the amount of seat time you'd get having you know proper teachers there that yeah. know to get you into good habits immediately was huge yeah i do want to get into the track a little bit more but uh before that what what were some of the main things that you saw from beginners that um just consistent mistakes that they would make um timing really just timing yeah yeah because you get like people transitions that would, and stuff no like even just initiating you know so oh, okay. i would when I teach someone, I don't teach them with handbrake at all. Like, if you see my wife drive, like, my wife's a pretty, like, aggressive, yeah, good driver. Yeah. She still doesn't know how to use handbrake. Never taught her. But she rips. I didn't know how to use one when I first started. Yeah. So. And she rips. But that I think that's a big thing. It's like, don't get me wrong, handbrake absolutely has a place. Yeah. But I think learning without it, it teaches you so much more because you're not using that band-aid to fix a link or whatever, you, you start to think a lot more about lines and yeah. technique to make a link happen rather than like, oh, I can just give it heaps here and then drag it in mm. and I'll make it. You know, the the idea of like staying on throttle for way longer and then using foot brake, yeah. you know, things like that, I think makes you 10 times better driver, heaps faster, more aggressive and yeah. You know, you you got to see those fronts locking up, not from a left foot brake, yeah. but from a, you know, you're going so deep in there that, you know, you're locking fronts to try and pull it up into a corner, stuff like that. <laughs> like, that's some of the coolest shit, I reckon. Hell yeah. Well, actually, I heard you say that one time, like, whenever you first came to the States, I think it was Drift Week, um, on, or I guess, it probably wasn't your first time in the States, but on the internet, um, you had mentioned that, that the US just drives, like, really handbrakey. Legit. The thing is, is that the main thing influencing the US drift scene is obviously Formula Drift, and a lot of the courses are requiring it. You know, they're, yeah. they're asking for a pull in. You know what I mean? They're not asking for a snappy trans. Well, I guess they to an extent, but you know what I mean. Like a lot of these courses, like you look at Atlanta, there's a handful of guys that will actually like snap the car in, but majority mm -hmm. are driving down and yeah, winding it on, and, yeah. and that's you know what I mean. Like that's their influence. So yeah. that's sort of where they're getting that idea from, I guess, you yeah. know, so there's, you know, I go all over the world drifting and there's definitely like all different trains of thought and that's probably the raddest thing about drifting, but yeah, it definitely is handbrake heavy, Yeah, you know, on initiations. There's a lot of, I've always been a kick flick guy, <laughs> you know, so. The handbrake initiation was something that I had to break myself. Yeah, because once the, what bothered me the most was just seeing the video footage afterwards. It looks terrible. <laughs> yeah, but it, it is what it is. Like, there's definitely places for it. Um, but yeah, definitely at least a, like a kick into the handbrake. You know, yeah. like snap the car <laughs> in. You know, that's just personal like preference and style. It is a it's a style thing at the end of the day. Yeah. Like you want to kick and flick because it always just looks way better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. Definitely still got its place, especially chasing and stuff like that. There's a lot of times, there's a lot of situations where a handbrake looks better than a left foot brake, you know, especially in a chase scenario where you just got to back the car up on the handbrake yeah, and angle sure. it up rather than left foot braking, just, you know, lean the car over and kind of boring, I guess. Yeah. And it, just because you're on handbrake doesn't mean the car has to lurch around and stuff. Yeah. There's, there's ways to do everything. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Well, speaking of your big flicks, let's uh let's talk about you and LZ's run <laughs> in Canada. Or you backed it in on both. <laughs> well, backy's a thing I can do on demand. You know, yeah. I can I've throw a backy anywhere, pretty much anywhere, anytime. Like I that's something I've done for like my first backies was an A eighty six on the street, like Hell yeah. Two thousand and five six around there somewhere before anyone knew what backy was before it was a name <laughs> yeah absolutely oh yeah no when i first did a backy in a comp they were just like is it a zero what? is it there were, it was a lot of confusion this was pre-knuckles you know it was yeah. just pre pre-cut yeah. knuckles so yeah it was it's fun but that's just the bmx mentality of trying to like 
freestyle it, you know, and do yeah, something different and new. Bit. And, you know, back then especially, it was a trick. Where now yeah. it's consistent. I can, you know, it's consistent enough where, you know, you can do it. You know, I think drifting will eventually get to the point where there's absolutely no reason, especially in high level comp, that both cars won't be coming in absolutely 90 degrees. Like it should be it. Yeah. It should I be agree. there. Um, eventually it will. You know, yeah. there's no reason why you With can't. How fast like, it's growing this to where it's at now? I would assume so. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know. I've, I've been drifting with friends at home, mate Chop at home, which people would know. He, uh, he was the one driving the car that Adam was in that hit the tree. Oh. He's, a, he's actually a fantastic driver. But we've had, <laughs> we've had some crazy sessions with both of us coming in well past 90 degrees. Yeah. Absolutely door to door. Like, that's sick. you know what I mean? Just having a ball. It's where I think drifting will eventually get. You know, but it's um, it was a, a it's the big event. All eyes are on Adam. The of judges course, had yeah. given me top qualifier for doing it in qualifying, so to me that sets a precedent that it's okay to do it. <laughs> um, but I was like, you know what? Even if I get knocked out against Adam, the most eyes will be on it, and everyone will see yeah. it. So I'm like, ah, oh. dude, I, I tell you, I was sitting in that chair watching it on that TV, and when you did it, I jumped up screaming. I was like, that's fucking sick. <laughs> No, it was well. That's the thing is, anybody that was there, I think my second run on the track was basically that line. Yeah. So it was like, it was a perfect corner for it. You know, the closing radius corners like that are yeah perfect for that sort of stuff. And it's actually I could go in a lot faster backwards than I could than you could normally. You stay on throttle for so much longer to do a backy because the car pulls I guess up less, fast. Less less surface area of the tire scrubbing too. If What's you're going more, you're in the direction big, of the you're chucking up a big air brake. Yeah. When I'm past 90, I'm get on throttle when I'm backwards. So it's like digging the car. You know what I mean? So there's That's like, cool. you can definitely go a lot deeper. Like I gained a ton in the chase position by backing behind him. Mm -hmm. You know, I caught up a ton. Yeah. So that sort of stuff is harder to do, I think. Impressive. Not harder to do, but it's, um, you know, there's... Take seat time, just like anything else. But the foot breaking in behind just definitely doesn't look as cool. I think... Yeah. I think... To me, the the one in the chase was the cooler one. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Like, you know, you you definitely see backies, but the the one in chase, I was like, oh, I'll be cheeky, you know. Yeah, <laughs> definitely throw that one in the going chase on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. That's sort of where I went with it, but that was my mindset to that. You know what I mean? And then obviously in the final, I went back to just ninety again instead of yeah. you know going past ninety, um, just having fun with it. And that's the great thing about those events; they are fun, and you know where. You know, I guess in an FD and and things like that, you know, there's too many. You know, you've got the rules, so you know, what I mean, you can't, you know, technically going past ninety degrees is a spin and a zero, and, you know. blah blah blah. Even though I I think it's going to get to that point where it'll be a thing. There's no a backies aren't unchaseable. They're only unchaseable yeah. because you can't do them. Yeah. That's well, it. like you said, with the handbrake, they're looking for certain areas to handbrake. Back then, if you broke it, if you were braking at all, you got deducted points. So, yeah, I, I I see that. I definitely think it'll get to that point too. Um, how, how would you suggest if someone wanted to learn backies and didn't know the first place to start? What would what would your first suggestions be to them? Drive, just drive, drive. Just flick it as hard There's as you can. So many people like, oh, you air up the front to a hundred and this and that. It's like, no. okay, I was going to ask that next because I don't no. believe that's true. No, I don't, I don't think that no. matters. Like at that event, I was running 22 PSI in the front and 14 PSI in the rear. Yeah. 245s front, 265s rear. Shit. You know yeah. what I mean? So my car wasn't like slippy front, you know, mm. grippy rear. You know, obviously you can freaking, you put space savers on the front, you back yeah. your bus. Like, yeah. I personally like a lot of front grip. Yeah. I've never been, every time I've driven with my front tires aired up a little bit more, dude, it just feels like the front end is just washing everywhere. Mm. I just, I like balance. Yeah. For me, yeah. it's balance. Like, I like probably a smidge more grip in the rear only because, you know, when you're on big lock, steering inputs are minimal anyway. Mm -hmm. You're steering with the, with yeah. your wheels, with your rear wheels. So, um, I think more of a balance is more than anything. And that's something I actually worked with Grant Anderson because he had a ton of front grip. And he'd all, the times I did see him spin out, it was heavily front grip versus what he had on the back. And now he's gone yeah. to a setup very similar to mine. That's why I was comfortable to give him my car. Because essentially yeah. his car is in a way set up the same as mine now. And he could jump in it comfortably and, and drive it like his own. So hmm. that's why I was happy. And, you know, we're good buddies and 
you know, yeah. we, we chatted about that sort of stuff and, you know, he, he did make a change from taking grip out of the front, but he didn't, you don't take it all out. <laughs> no, no. You know, you definitely, <laughs> um, yeah, it's balance. A car that's really well balanced, you should be able to do almost anything with. Yeah. So. Would you say there's any chassis out there that it would kind of be different in that aspect? No. No, it's just all relatively the same. Yeah. Okay. All, it's, all, it's all the same concept. The thing is with it, all the suspension stuff you can do these days and everything's adjustable, like you can just make yeah. everything feel like an, make everything feel like an S chassis, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, fair. that's like my Zs at home. I work with GK Tech at home and what we're chasing is an S chassis feel. <laughs> You know, yeah. How can we make this Z feel like an S chassis? That's funny. You know, and we make it feel like an S chassis. Like, I got buddies. You know, a lot of the people hate the Zs. You know, they, oh, they sound crap. This, that. You know, proper OG S thirteen sort of guys. And then I've had buddies like jump in my three seventy, and they're like, oh, "I think sick. It, it, it's kind of rad, man. I don't it's know. just like my car, except it's not twisting to to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, that like sort of can. yeah. So that sort of thing. So it's like you can definitely make. A car, yeah. any car, feels sick. You know, they're, it's all setup related. Yeah. And I wouldn't even say, you know, it's it's a certain lock kit or anything like that because there's so much adjustment. Yeah. You can make the best lock Insane kit in the world feel like crap if you set it up badly. You know, I've jumped into I've some it. people's cars <laughs> and I'm just like, how do you, like, Rudnick was you one. You fight this thing every Dude, day? The, one of the last drift weeks I was on, Rudnick was there in his 370Z. I'm like... This thing is fucking garbage. Yeah. Like, how do you drive this thing? Like, I can drive pretty much anything, and I can barely drive your car. That like, car this never is looked like it drove right. The worst. You know what I mean? And it was nothing to do with the lock kit he had. Yeah. It was just badly set up. And that's all there was to it. You know what I mean? And then, you know, he jumped in mine. He's like, oh, this is the way 370s are meant to feel. And he yeah. drove it fantastically and blew it up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, it's not Damn, his fault. It's not his fault. Out. Well, it is his fault. It was very, very hot. And then he did a celebration. He did. He came to Australia and actually killed it in a comp because he was just Hell chill yeah. and didn't have to worry about the car and didn't yeah. get in his own head, you know. Um, but yeah, I guess you can make any chassis feel, you know, similar to what you need with the amount of parts there are these days. Everything's, you know, majority of cars now off the shelf. Yeah. You know, so you can pretty much Science get anything you it, need. Man, it's just, it's yeah. too out there. Well, just, uh, the the only th any cars driftable. It's just is someone making a lock kit yet? Yeah, is is the question. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I sort of don't know why. Why aren't people in America more people like with that don't have the money out buying Crown Vicks? Because in Australia we have the AU Falcon, Dude, right? I, I'm gonna be honest. I truthfully agree with that. I think that would be a really good chassis to drive. It's like it's like the the America's JZX, in my opinion. To an extent, Just yeah, but all yes. automatic. But that's the thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Like, for the for we had the AU Falcon in Australia, which any Aussies watching are going to be like, oh, man, why did he have to bring up the this AU Falcon? Thing. <laughs> they are. They look like a Ford Fusion, the yeah. old ones. Like, they look ugly as sin, <laughs> but they have an inline, four, uh, inline six. They make enough power that they're, they're just, they're cockroaches. They, they don't, don't really die. You used, you used to pick them up. Almost for, I actually got one for free. The last one I had, I got for free. Um, dude just didn't want it. It was getting rid of like, come I take this thing off away. My property, yes, now. for real. He had it parked out in the street, and basically <laughs> they needed it off the street. And I was like, yeah. sign me up, fam. I'm there. Yeah, truck and trailer. I'm on the got way. There, it was like misfiring a little bit, changed out some coil leads, and like minty, golden, great car. Um, but uh, you know, in a bunch of you know, I relate it to jet skis. Right. Okay. If you have a jet ski and you're just out on your own, eh, it's kind of a little bit yeah. of fun. But you got a bunch of friends out on jet skis. Yeah. It's crazy good fun. That's what like an automatic, you know, big drift car is. I think. Yeah. And one because you don't care about it because it's such a cheap, shitty car. So I've been like talking like to, to a couple it. people around. I'm like, especially like, look at like E Town's Figure Eight. Oh yeah. That shit with like four to 10 to 20 crown vicks yeah and just because you all be the same dude. speed you know what i mean and Look just like beating the shit out of each other well that's the thing they probably ding, 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 want on a course ding, ding, like that ding, ding, they ding. won't be that slow yeah because it is what it is like yeah and 
you know, you, you take the cost of drifting from here down to here, you take the care factor like to the floor. Like yeah. it, there's and then zero the fun care factor, factor shoots all the way up. The fun factor goes absolutely through the roof. So I'm kind of curious about that because I'm like, yeah, I, I feel like there's a huge opening in America for like, you know, there's a place for everything. You know, in Japan, oh, we used to beat the shit out of JZX 100s and 90s. They were the crown fit. Yeah. You know, they were the shit heap. Uh, when now they're worth a million dollars, but um, that's where they were. That's where they were, you know? So that's just an interesting one that I've probably been meaning to bring up to America as a whole. Like, yeah. Don't necessarily I agree. Be, like promote it, but I think I would it's like just... to see someone do like a Cletus McFarlane type thing where his crown vix, where he does the, the yeah. whole and compete drifting. Yeah, that but do it so in drifting. Good. Yeah, that'd be so good. I'm so down. Dude. <laughs> Right. Gotta talk to some people. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Fuck. I think it'd be sick. Yeah. Honestly, get like twenty cars, run an invite only top sixteen. Yeah, and have us all in Crown Vicks. Oh my god, be gnarly. Yeah, next LZ World Tour compound. final final round is the Crown Vic round. <laughs> <laughs> You've all had your flash cars. Now let's see what you can do with just driving a bit. Yeah, you get Hell the yeah. crap car now. Let's all do it. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I think they're fantastic. I think they'd be hilarious. I actually saw one in Canada drifting, and I got so excited. I'm like. Because it was so, Finally. well, the reason I got excited about it is because I was in Canada and Montreal. I feel like it's kind of being slept on, especially for the guys in the, in the Northeast um, of the States. Mm -hmm. It's from New York. I think it's, it's roughly six hours away to get up to Montreal and they have a place there called iCar and they have a drift yeah. park there and it's so sick. Hell yeah. It's literally reminds me of Archfield, like my track, but there was a Crown Vic going around and I'm just like in my head being like, why isn't there 20 <laughs> of these heaven. right now? <laughs> like this course was all second gear, like tight, twisty, like yeah. absolutely perfect for skill building and like some shitters that didn't use much tires and that you didn't have to care about would be the bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think would be the one to probably pull that off? I would assume LZ would possibly be the only one. <laughs> I don't know. It's, well... That would be a start. He's got the money to do <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, I guess financially you got to make it happen. Yeah, I guess convincing the driver. I don't know how much you know. I guess in in uh, like down in Florida, they're probably not that cheap because of Cletus. I think there's definitely other areas where oh, yeah. you could still get them super cheap, no doubt. So around here, you could probably find them for about a thousand dollars or so. Yeah, so that's probably where you start. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> somewhere somewhere that they're a bit cheaper than they are in different places where they've been elevated in price. Yeah. What so. would be the, you, besides uh, Jersey, what do you think would be like the perfect track for that? There's a ton, honestly. Like you could I would say anywhere. Mid Pond or something like that. I haven't been to Mid Pond. That's one track I haven't been to yet, but oh, Mid dude. Mid Pond, I've seen Mid Pond though. Mid Pond yeah. would be fine. Like anywhere where it's sort of like your second geary, yeah. you know, hot, top yeah. of second sort of layout where, you know, you'd obviously put the automatic in one gear and, and you're good, you know what I mean? And you can just rip around and yeah. just door the crap out of each other. Honestly, like, most of the time I would get out of that AU Falcon was because my face was sore from just <laughs> smiling and laughing. You know what I mean? Like, we had some wild moments, you know? we Yeah, had, yeah we'd rolled them. We, like... um and the thing is, when they get too beat up, we'd then take them out and rally them on dirt and crash into each other. Yeah, you just have... get a whole other life out of we, them. And then, yeah, we'd literally just grab another one, put the lock kit in, <laughs> and, wait, and away you go again. Your Dude, lock, lock kit and a awesome. trans cooler was all we'd do. Lock kit and a trans wow. cooler, weld the diff. So not even coilovers or anything like God, that? God, no. Fucking no. Worst case, you chop Dude, springs. So awesome. Yeah, you don't spend money. It's not It's not like that. <laughs> it wasn't like that. He's got money for stuff like that. No, no. <laughs> but that was the whole point that made it so good is you just, it was cheap uh, seat time and you would, you take away, a lot of people are scared to wreck their car. Yeah. And you take away that by like, you, you switch on a transition and crash into the, in your buddy and you can literally just in just tears laugh. laughing about it. It's definitely yeah. a lot better than, you know, like. <laughs> I've had so many people run into me this trip, like just trying too oh, hard yeah. and crashing into me. Yeah. It's been very annoying because <laughs> I spent you a bunch put on of money. This image man, you're the one of the hardest drivers out there, so they want to put on a show. Yeah, they try. Yeah, they try. If they could get to the level, then try. That would be better. <laughs> people wrecking my shit, like for real. I had I, just before the last LZ, the first LZ event of the year. I had that car painted, stick it everywhere. Yeah. Like, literally, 
Nate, Nate and his boys helped me sticker it at the event. I picked oh, it up. At, I qualified. I was actually meant to get it before the event. I qualified in um, Chris's dad's car, oh. and I qualified first or second in in his dad's car. And then the next day, the next morning at eight a.m., I picked up my yeah. car from the paint booth. Like literally, they drove it out of the paint booth. I jumped in it, drove it the forty-five minutes to E Town, jacked Ooh. it straight up in the air, threw my Just Engineering lock kit in the front, <laughs> and while I was doing that, they wrapped like one side of the car. And once we finished putting the lock kit in, I went out and got some practice. Then when I came back in and between practice <laughs> and the comp, we wrapped the other side. <laughs> so big shout out to Nate and the boys. They wrapped the car quicker oh, than I awesome. ever thought was possible. Um, but then, yeah. So this year, LS Fest, I had a dude just like absolutely plow into the front of the car in drift. Yeah. Like I was in drift. He wasn't just drove into the front of it after he'd already straightened three or four times. Yeah, um, I saw it. I was there. <laughs> Nate hit me in practice at the yeah, yeah. event in that same spot. But that was like, that was actually a drifting thing. You know, we were coming in door to door and it was one you're not mad about. It was like, good. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a dude trying too hard and he binned it into you. And then literally yesterday, I had a, uh, oh, not yesterday, day before, dude just, he was four feet too far up when I went to transition. <sighs> I hit him with like, with my wheel, ripped the whole front off of his car, like everything off. Ooh. Um, but destroyed my Z06 re- rear panel, which is the only part that's expensive on the damn car. Oh, dude. <sighs> so, no. It's but it's, how that works. <laughs> it's like, please leave my car alone. Yeah, like, yeah. Door me. Put tires on me. Yes, yeah. I'm down. All the tire marks you want. Just yeah. Don't break shit. Yeah. Yeah, just, this is for everybody watching. Dooring is not putting dents in a car, all right? If you're putting dents in a car, you're crashing into your friends. Mm. dooring is tire like yeah. you're, you're taking off paint even better you know they can get something afterwards and wipe the rubber off and the paint's still there that's dooring yeah smashing your buddy's door in and caving them you're not dooring buddy you're crashing sorry <laughs> i 100 percent agree and i've had multiple people say that on this podcast yeah because there's a lot of that i think the problem is once you're known uh, people do want to prove their worth i guess and use that Especially as a point. Especially a big vent like that where cameras are watching, so many people are watching. Yeah. And like, They're trying to show you head. how good they are at it. And yeah, a lot, a lot of the time it doesn't work out. Yeah. So I'm all for definitely for people giving it a, a red hot go. But yeah, let's get in some Crown Vicks and do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why whenever uh, Swan said at, uh, well, you weren't there, but Ford Fest, um, when Chelsea and Vaughn came out, he was like, they're probably going to want to tandem with some of you guys. Don't freak out. Don't try and be a hard ass and get all up on their door if you don't want to do it just say no yeah and i was like dude finally like why can't every event host or flagger or whatever say stuff like that to the drivers yeah because they get too cocky yeah no they do i think it's just a case of you know people get hot-headed in the moment it's just a matter of probably don't try not to make an ass out of yourself (laughs) Like, I feel bad for the kid, but the kid that did run into me at LS Fest, like, he zeroed out, like, I think three or four times he'd straightened and zeroed. And then and at, on the last corner, still just drove into the front of my car. It's like, that was for nothing. Yeah. You know, and that accident. Just shut down and in, after the second you know, one. If I was to fix my car for the event, that was probably a, a 500 to to $1,000 accident for me. Yeah. You know, and it's like, why? When you were doing everything right. Yeah, I was just cruising. Yeah. You know, I was on angle and I, I literally watched him come at me and i'm like well i'm not going to come out adrift so i just literally just went copped it and i was <laughs> just like Ugh. so yeah it's one of those things i guess that's drifting yeah yeah well <clears throat> speaking of that what is something that you've kind of seen <clears throat> change over the years in drifting that you're not really fond of or something that you wish would change um there's probably not a lot of change. I just drifting's rad. People that I feel like people that hate on drifting or uh, hate what it's become, this and that, are just hanging out with the wrong people. Mm. You know Take what I mean? You're crowds. probably hanging out with some dickheads. Yeah. Like it's simple as that. You know what I mean? You got to hang around with people that are like minded. Hang around with people like that are like you. You know, I see. Yeah. You That's know, it's interesting because I always see attitude. Yeah, but I think there's certain um, groups that are you know, more toxic towards other people that don't think their way. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and if you're more open to stuff, like I'm down with everything. I love slammed cars. I loved fucking sick. For, you know, I love all my like genuine wheels. Like I absolutely love my Kanzai's. I genuinely yeah. fucking love my Kanzai wheels. Like everything they've done except, except for their newest design. I'm not super, st- I don't like absolutely love their newest design, but every other design, which I, you know, I can see influence from other designs, but they've definitely still done like their own thing. Yeah. So it's like I freaking love them, but I also, you know, at home on my S13, I got SSRs and Equips, yeah, and all the, all oh, I like wheels. that stuff as well, you know. And I love a slammed car, but I also like and appreciate a comp style car as well when it's done right. And I'm not gonna shit on anyone for yeah. any of those reasons. A car can look good in any form well, mm. to an extent, but um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's when you get people trying to force their opinions on the other people and that's where you sort of get that shitty attitude i think Mm -hmm. like i was at an event not too long ago i won't mention the event or anything but it had a certain stigma it had a certain stigma to it and there was somebody commenting after the event they're just you know tired of the drama and and stuff like that and they'd basically been picked on for the way their car looks Mm -hmm. because it wasn't the right style yeah um and it's like you're just trying to hang out with the wrong people you know, and you're trying to get admiration and, and respect from people that are never going to respect you yeah. for what you like. So, it's like, just hang out with other people. <laughs> Dude. Not, not everyone's going to love that's, you, you know what I mean? That's as blunt as it needs to be, though. Yeah. You just need to stop hanging out with those people. If they're the wrong kind of people for you, hang out with someone else. Yeah. You know, you yin and yang. <laughs> like, <laughs> just go your separate ways. Like, there's no hard feelings and you see each other, you can still hang out or whatever, but it's just they have a different view to you. Yeah they feel the need to try and force it upon you because they think their way is better. It is what it is. That's, that's human nature. Uh, but you definitely don't need to conform to it necessarily. Um, you know, go hang out with some dudes that have an attitude like yours, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and someone you can have a conversation with a lot of times, you know, those people that are seen as cool in my experience, a lot of them just hate each other anyway. <laughs> That's probably too um, broad to say, but you do see it a lot. You know what I mean? Like yeah. often people that are uh, super opinionated on their particular style are usually talking crap on their mates as well anyway. So mm-hmm. um, it is what it is. Every single one of y'all is thinking of that person right now too. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> if you think I'm talking about you, probably am. Call them out. Yeah. Oh, uh, all right. Well, we'll, we'll branch off of not so... Uh... <laughs> I guess, objective <laughs> topics, but um, do you ever plan on the Corvette kind of taking the next step in its build or mm. are you going to keep it simple? Because I know a lot of people here in the U.S. would love to see you start branching up into the higher um, like levels of drifting with that car, but yeah. I know it's, it's such a good car. Yeah, I like it as it is. Yeah. I don't really want to mess it up like i definitely would like maybe another 50 horsepower yeah just to make things less clutch kicky because i'm very you know i'm having to beat the so shit like out of it using it <laughs> yeah i am and it's still just like a t56 and a normal Ooh, base yeah. z06 stuff uh base c6 stuff which i haven't had any dramas with well, i had a something with a selector go wrong on one of the drift weeks but we fixed it pretty Sounds quick bad, yeah. um you know so i'm still on standard axles and everything and putting a ton of grip into the car obviously mm. Um, but I'm still just 400 horsepower. So the things it's holding together and, you know, touch wood, it's, it's been fantastic and reliable and I don't kind I don't, don't want to mess it up. It's still, it's my supercar. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I'd get a shitty S13 <laughs> or something that, you know, I would care less about, even though my S13 at home's worth, I'd put way more money into it than, <laughs> than the Corvette costs here. But still my wife would be cringing listening to that. She hates my S13 because it has been a, a, a I had a fi- uh, financial mistake sticker on it, and she's like, "That's literally the most fitting sticker for yeah, the car." Yeah. Just we just had bad luck. It was a car that I had bad luck with. I had a first shop that built it, uh, went out of business for obvious Ooh, reasons because yeah. they couldn't build a car for shit. Uh, the second business that I had working on the car also went out of business. Oh my god! Um, and they were ones I paid a ton of money, um, and it still wasn't right. And, uh, yeah, and I was just like, I, I stripped it back to bare metal, literally bare metal that, um, 
wow. sandblasted the thing back to bare metal and rebuilt it ground up with uh, myself and buddies this time around. And even then we've had dramas, you know, I had a motor go in the dyno, had a forged motor built and then it caught the second clutch plate on the way in and we didn't know. So it immediately killed the bearings on a fully built oh, motor dude. and then got another motor in it. It's all sweet. It's good now, but it was just yeah. like, it's the been, process uh, was... she's been a pricey one. So <laughs> oh. yeah, it's, um, but she's also great. It's a genuine Japanese yeah. aesthetic convertible. So the proper aesthetic convertible, but, um, yeah, I can't even remember the question. I, I really like my aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was it was just more or less about the the Corvette. Um, if you ever oh, turning it into something, going into a deeper level of it. Yeah, look, I guess it's probably a thing that I've projected a little bit about. Like, I'm like, I'm definitely nowhere near. I'm definitely not anti FD by any means, but yeah, I'm not well off. I don't. My parents are both dead. Um, yeah. I don't really have any family to fall sorry, back on. As well. uh, I don't have family to fall back on if shit goes wrong. You know, my wife also doesn't have family. Uh, and we've got two kids. So it's like, you know, much like you have with Chelsea going into FD, you know, every single cent. Yeah. You know, and, and you, you go in absolutely full because it doesn't matter if you've got no money and you're sleeping in your car. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, because you, you got yourself to worry about where, you know, I've got a wife and kids and yeah, your priorities nothing are to fall, you know, if I eat. If I don't make ends meet, I'm on the street with yeah. children. So it's like definitely a situation, you know, I love drifting, but it's not worth that much, Yeah, you know, to, and that's not where the ultimate level of fun is. Mm. You know, I mean, the ultimate level of fun is jamming with the boys, Yeah, you know what I mean? I jamming with homies or, or just jamming with anyone that's great fun to drive with in general. And, and the mm. banter and the fun afterwards is probably just as important, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, so it's just a value thing, you know what I mean? Like your your value for money on, on driving, forming the drift isn't as good as, you know, doing drift weeks and all of that sort of stuff, which you hear Aaron bang on about a lot. But it's true, you know what I mean? Like for what a round of Formula Drift would cost you, you can do a whole drift where you can do seven tracks in yeah. a week and yeah. have literally a super amazing time, meet a ton of new people, go to a ton of new places. You know what I mean? And, and that, that value for money, <laughs> that value for money on your drifting is just like exponentially more, you know, which yeah. is why I think Chelsea's walking away, it's, even though he's obviously doing well in FD from a, you know, he's not spending all his money anymore. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, you can see the, the amount of time and effort that still goes into it, mm -hmm. which again, I still would like to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've competed with experience. James. I've competed with most of the people in FD outside of FD, you know, in Europe mm -hmm. and stuff like that when I was competing in Europe a lot. And, um, you know, and I know I can hold my own. It's just, you know, if the right opportunity came up, if I could make the right opportunity work, I'd definitely like to be in FD. Yeah. Um, whether that would be me building my own car, I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically it with that. Um, it would take the right sponsorship. Oh, much. look, Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> but uh, I'm also uh, an idiot. I've never. I, I'm literally just now for the first time ever working just because a buddy in Canada does it. Uh, I'm making my first like proposal thing. I've never done a, oh, a deck really? ever. Yeah, I've never done it. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm 40. I've never. Dude, I've had a whole ass BMX career with sponsors and everything, and that was my literally how I made a living. That's and then insane. drifting for all this time, and I've had a ton of pro drives and all that sort of stuff, but I've never actually done a proposal. So, <laughs> which is my own stupidity more than anything. I've had a lot of people reach out to help. Like I I've known Vaughn since 08. Yeah. And he, you know, he's he even sent me a proposal, his proposal to like copy basically <laughs> and, and use. And I was an idiot, I guess. I don't yeah. like, I, I feel mean, weird yeah. asking for stuff. You know what I mean? Cause I do too. I'm, it's very I'm a, awkward. <laughs> It sounds dumb to say, but I'm more of like a common sense person, even though anybody with common sense wouldn't drift, right? We're idiots. <laughs> but, you know, why would you give someone money to go drifting? Like, I've, in my head, you know what I mean? Just because I'm, it, I, it's, it's so much fun and it's great. And you know what, though? These days, I definitely get it more with, you know, the internet and, and the influencing side of things because mm -hmm. it does work. Like, yeah. The shit. marketing aspect, I get it. I got a Z because I was watching Adam's shit. I'm a grown ass man, and a, I was a pro drifter at the time. But I'm videos. still like, 
that's a fucking good idea. I'm going to go and get a Z as well and yeah. beat the shit out of it. That's fun. And they don't cost much. And who cares if you crash it because it's just an ugly Z. Yeah. Like that was like made sense. It influenced me. And I'm like, okay, these days, absolutely, you know, I, I see sponsorship stuff making more sense for companies. But um, back then I felt like, like, why would these companies put stuff on a car and yeah, it, it, it really it did, didn't. Make it made sense less like sense. Yeah. Uh, where these days definitely makes more sense. The whole world revolves around influencers now. So yeah, I mean, down to fucking chocolate bars with Mr. Beast and shit. Oh my kids, like, dude! What the that, fuck? That dude? definitely works, man. Every time we go yeah. in somewhere, because there you see them at a lot more supermarkets and stuff here. And my kids are like, oh, Beast Bar, Beast dude, Bar. Have you ever seen the the grocery store trick? Oh, where they put a kid's kid's eye level and all yeah, that. Yeah, dude, all the kid stuff and the vibrant color stuff is yep. all at the bottom and the healthy stuff's up top. Yeah. If you didn't know that, now you know. So keep your kids away from the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, just put them up high. Yeah, yeah, yeah carry them on your shoulders yeah. or something so they can't see it. No, just tell them no. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's very simple. <laughs> no. So. That's a lot of... Well, we won't get into that. Never yeah. mind. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Um, so, what... With owning a track, like being around the world so much, being caught up in this influencer era of, I know you probably wouldn't consider yourself an influencer, I wouldn't think, but I would say you're in that crowd. I think it's it's funny because I've been doing YouTube now for probably, I think, five years. Yeah. Like just before COVID. It was basically I had when I had Adam come over, I sort of just watched what he was doing, yeah. studied how he did it, and I was like... I think it's I can do that. Hard, yeah. yeah, and he was telling me, he's like, man, I you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. Like, you know, you should. Like, why wouldn't you? And I was yeah. like, well, I guess. And I started doing it. But there's a ton of people that know me these days because of YouTube. And they don't even realize yeah. I had a professional BMX career. Uh, sorry, professional drifting career. Yeah. But like a comp style. You know, I mean, like I, I did FD and I, I did the Red Bull World Championship in mm -hmm. 08, whenever it was. Um, You know, I... Being on podiums, I've been on podiums above James. Yeah. You know, like, you know, the first drive I had in Europe was actually meant to be James Dean's drive. <sighs> and I, he wasn't making the first event. I made the first event, made a really big impression on the team. And then they ended up keeping me in the car for the season. And then ah. later in that season, they brought a second car out and me and James were on the same team. That's cool. Um, yeah. Wimbledon. Yeah. It was a comp, it was a drift comp outside of yeah. the Wimbledon uh, tennis stadium. And it's OG one where there's like a jump in the track and stuff yeah. like that. It was super yeah. rad. Um, they don't know about any of that stuff. They're like, oh, you you know, you're a YouTuber and then yeah, you're doing like comp, comps and stuff. I'm like, no, I'm a drifter. Yeah. That's doing some YouTube. <laughs> it's, Let's get that straight. I, I am a drift you, I am a drift guy that's doing some YouTube. I'm not a YouTuber that's doing some drifting. Yeah. That's all right, guys. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> that kills Dude, it's me. It's weird though. Like it kills me. Getting that like the people coming up to you and like saying that stuff where they know you from YouTube and it's, it's honestly surreal. Like I, to me, it's kind of weird. Cause I'm just, I feel like just a normal dude. Like you said, like, I just want to drift. Like that's all I care about. Get more people into drifting. I'm, I'm a nobody still. Yeah. But and I think the interesting thing with, um, with YouTube is, uh, you know, I guess you always compare cause you have buddies like Adam and, and stuff like that, that are, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views every day yeah and i'm sort of like oh you know i'm getting 10 to twenty thousand video views and like no one no one's watching my stuff it's like yeah 10 to twenty thousand people is a lot of fucking oh, people fucking right people, yeah. like, it's a, that's a shit ton of people that's like a good size stadium of people yeah um so it's like you know i guess you don't think about it but then you're in some random ass place in america in a supermarket and someone's like oh man i watch your videos and stuff it's like holy shit yeah. You know, it's like, it's, it's, uh, it's weird. You know, I guess Puts it you into think you're super you. small, you know, versus, you know, some of your buddies that are huge, but it's like at the same time, there's still, it's still a ton of people. Like yeah. it's crazy. Um, but again, they're all meeting me online now. So they don't know necessarily <laughs> about that stuff. So it's an interesting dynamic for me because there's not a lot of, well, uh, now they will because they'll have this to listen to. There's not a lot of pro drivers that then, that then go and do YouTube. Like, obviously, everybody in FD now, they have to. You know what yeah. I mean? It's part of it. Um, but less comp-based, I guess, for me. Mm -hmm. So, it's interesting. Yeah, I agree. Well, where do you kind of see 
with like not just the influencers, but like the pro drivers that you've driven with, the teams you've been on, all of the stuff that you've done, where would you say you rank yourself as far as driving skill? I would put it very high at the top. Not to like fill your head or anything, but like yeah. genuinely, just what I see, you're one of the best drivers I've seen. Yeah, I know I can hold my own. I've, I think the hardest thing is I've, for, I wouldn't say I've necessarily been on shitty teams by any means, but uh, lower spec teams. Like when we were winning everything back home, like we were super low budget team. Mm -hmm. We made ourselves look really good from a sense of, you know, we just paint everything. Like we had a we had a dude that worked for the city, and he would basically like his job was essentially do your job, then be out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. So he would just go to the workshop to the guy that owned own the team and he would just go and muck around for six seven hours a day of his eight hour shift because he only had like an hour of work to do um so he would just go there and like even our, our jack our toolbox everything he just painted it all the same color as the car you know and the car was only painted a basic green but he painted Pink everything the, the same <laughs> color you know he zapped together a tire rack you know that were rolling around a tire rack and this was in like 2007 8 yeah. you know what i mean when People didn't have the big golf cart things and all that sort of stuff. And our whole outfit, we all had matching shirts and stuff. And it, and we tried to look as pro as possible, but we were literally like, I would only ever go and do like three practice laps because we didn't have enough tires to get through to the uh, finals. Yeah. If we did that, yeah. we never did practice outside of the comp. We only That's drove crazy. the car at the comp um, and stuff like that made it work. You know what I mean? Yeah. We had seasons where we won... We won every single round except for one. And even then, it was they just kept rerunning us until I made a mistake. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we had times like that. And then, you know, the year where I drove for Low Brain Drifters the first time, like the first time I drove the car, the entire exhaust metal, manifold snapped. And the old TDO6 thing, SR, the yeah. TDO6, the old truss manifolds, they snap. So on a right-hand corner, the exhaust would swing across and close the <laughs> hole over and the car would make boosts. And on the left-handers, it would open up and I'd be basically NA just going... Rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> That's awesome. um, still found a way to get fourth in that car when it was like that. But, Dude, um, fighting the car like crazy. Yeah, but even when I ended up driving for Low Brain Drifters again, when I went and did the stuff with uh, Ireland when I was... Uh, sort of just poking fun. I I don't know if you've seen a lot of that stuff when I did IDC back in the day when I was sort of just taking the piss. A little bit, yeah, yeah. So essentially my mindset for that was knowing how passionate, or the Irish are super passionate, obviously. They're super passionate people. They're yeah. very proud Irish and that. And I was just wanted to poke the bear, you know what I mean? And that was like my way of sort of getting noticed over there. And uh, in the background, it was all just laughs, but there's a lot yeah. of people that took that super serious. But um. You know, that car I was driving was probably 400, 450 wheel. Mm -hmm. It sounded sick. Had the ITBs. Yeah. Like, it, it, every part of it, like, seemed the, the bit, but it was it was hanging. You know, <laughs> the I remember one of the rounds of... I only did two rounds of IDC in that car. But I know... I think it was the, the first round I did with that car there. Um, it had no bolts on the gearbox. Oh, my God. So, you would actually push the clutch in and the gearbox the would gearbox push would back. Shift with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um... So, it's some issues with that, but it was, you know, we were 450 horsepower. Everybody else was, you know, big horsepower, 2Js and stuff. We we're still able to get like top four. That's um, crazy. I've always been in a much lesser car and yeah. been able to get, you know, fairly decent positions. So, um, that alone would explain why you're so good, I would say. We just make shit work. Yeah. <laughs> you got to, you got to, you yeah. know what I mean? You just got to make it work and you've got no other choice and you work out a way to make it work. Mm. Um, you know, so not having the, the equipment and still being able to make it work, I definitely, you know, feel like I could hold my own right at the top. So yeah, just, I couldn't imagine just driving anything, you know, that was reliable with a thousand horsepower and being able to actually, you know, not stress and just use it. Yeah. You know, I've driven, you know, plenty of crazy cars, but it's just having that in a, in a proper comp. I've never driven those cars in comp. Wow. So, you know, just not from a point of being able to drive. Like I, for me personally, when I jumped in crazy cars, like crazy, there was a Sephiro I drove in uh, Thailand 
and the guy's like crazy wealthy, owns a, a peanut company of all things. What? And his Sephiro is nuts. Well over a thousand. The car weighs under a thousand kilos. Like it was absolutely nutty. Like oh my stopped on a dime. It was like you were driving a toy. Oh. You know what I mean? It was it was silly. A little takes. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like one of those Chinese tires on it that are basically like glue. You know, the thing oh, was just dude. you could do absolutely Rocket anything shit. you want with it, you know, and it was silly. But I'm like, if I took that car into any comp, yeah. You'd literally just be running people over. <sighs> Compared to what I'm used to driving, which is like I'm used to like absolutely kicking the shit out of a car to make it work. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I guess you would have seen the my V the V10 BMW I, I drove for a yeah. little while there. That was another car that was lucky to be 400 horsepower, <laughs> and we're out there competing against like a lot of dudes had like a thousand horsepower out there. So what they thought was yeah. me pulling gears in a sequential, which it didn't have, it had a factory five speed, uh, six speed, um, was just me mid corner clutch kicking. So I'm coming around the corner like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> they they thought that was me pulling gears, and it's yeah. like no, they're clutch geeks. <laughs> That's me keeping it lit. But that was a car I had Chelsea set up, and that's when Chelsea yeah. was huge, like still the big BMW guy. He he set up basically the car was was Chelsea's FD car in an M3 CSL um, with a 400 horsepower motor. Fuck yeah! So I would that, argue that, that cool. he still is the BMW guy. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Just uh, and the dude, the shirt. But no, that but they he knows made? his shit. He knows his shit. You yeah. know what I mean? That's why. And he's Genius big BC. You know, the big suspension. C guy. He specced everything for us. He helped build the diff, the clutch. All that sort of stuff. So, um, that car was fantastic grip wise and everything else. Just didn't have the motor package. Yeah. I'd love to have that car. I'd love to own that car and put like a proper engine package in that, and it'd be mm. being sick. Definitely understand why the the boys get onto the BMWs. They're yeah. very good, very very good. Oh yeah, the suspension geometry is <laughs> better than any other other car. I would say, arguably. Yeah. But what's what's one of the craziest builds you've seen? Seen? All over the world, no matter where it is. That same guy has a full carbon fiber one. Like the whole chassis, oh, everything. For real? Yeah, the full chassis, everything. What was the weight difference on that one? Billet had a billet al- aluminum block, the lot. Every, like, imagine there was no budget. You know, so. Dude. Yeah. That's hard to even imagine. Yeah, it was like <laughs> eight, just over 800 kilos. So I don't know what that is in pounds. Dude. It's A86 weight. Yeah. In a four door Sephira. Probably- barely over a thousand pounds or something i don't i don't know what that equates to i'd have to correct us in the comments yeah. or whatever <laughs> oh. it's um very very light crazy power i didn't get to drive that one i drove his other one but still it was yeah. just like yeah those things and then uh sultan from abu dhabi yeah. he builds you know the carbon fiber bentley's and realistic and aston martin and just those the sorts Porsche. of stuff is so cool yeah the porsche the porsche is almost like that's a super nice build. Don't get me yeah, wrong, yeah. but it's almost like, yeah, from a from I a agree. sense, it, it's sick that he's it, drifting I it. it was sick, but I was like, when you it see it in person, when you see it in person, he's actually gone to create like it is a show car. Like yeah. you go up, everything he's done in the in, in in the sorry in the frunk, yeah, you know, all of that sort of stuff is actually super well done. You Doesn't know, he have it's weights? a concourse style. Yeah, he's got weights in the front to help balance it. <laughs> um, but you know, when you see someone get what is it the bentley like that shit's just Dude. wild so sick and that yeah. is aston martin just so freaking cool fuck you money yeah uh, but the thing is, is sultan you know he's hands-on he's oh, out yeah. there and he's in the shop he's very hands-on and stuff super nice guy um, i've talked to him in dms a couple of times but that's about it seems amazing to me no super nice yeah. guy all those guys from- doesn't even seem like he would be that type of guy to own all of that Cause you know, like sometimes when people own a shit ton of cars, higher end cars like that, yeah. they kind of have that cocky. Nah, Sultan. To him but nah, not he's him. definitely not. None it. of those guys that I've met out there are like that. They're all super down to earth, and that's good. Just um, yeah, they're all about like Sultan's car collection. You know, he has A eighty sixes and the you know E thirty sixes, and you know, I mean, they still have all those kind of cars as well. Yeah, you know what I mean, and and not crazy builds, like just fun ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, definitely. Why do you cool. think he's wanted to push the limits so much with some of those builds? Cause you can just curiosity. Cause you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why not? Yeah. You know, I mean, I would, not? if I had the money, I would. Yeah. But... Well, think about, you know, your imagination doesn't really have bounds when you can afford to do it, you mm. know? 
Think at, of any. At that point, it's literally life size Hot Wheels. Yeah, exactly. Those those stupid ideas you have, <laughs> you can actually do them. You know, like that's. Yeah. That's basically what there is to it. Um, Don't let anyone tell you no. <laughs> essentially, you know, like there's a ton of builds like I would love to do and see, and there's people that do them because they have the skill or the know how mm. to do it. You know, so why not? Hell yeah. What what would you build if you had in no but like whatever budget? To build like a crazy car? Yeah. Like any I don't know. It didn't even have to be a drift car. I like trucks. Like big really? tr- like I would actually like so I know that you see here the the sm- like smaller size Peterbilts and stuff they do. Like they yeah, put them on like yeah. a F truck chassis or something. Mm-hmm. I think something like that, but properly done drifting would be pretty sick. Oh wow. Because I think like there's C the C whatever the C tens or not C tens but C thirties and stuff they make lock okay, kits yeah. for that stuff now. Really? Um, yeah, there's there's a wow. couple companies. Well, I know there's at least one company that makes lock kits for a few of the trucks. So well, you, okay, you can yeah, the LS yeah. pet size. Some, I don't know what you they're small mid mid size trucks. I guess for you guys, I don't know what. The, Which one is it? We don't get the variance in size of trucks. I don't know. You stuff that comes with LSs basically. Oh yeah, it's just a normal single, like my Silverado out yeah. there. Yeah, just a, yeah, like Silverados and yeah. stuff. There's lock kits for Silverados. There definitely is. So, wow. yeah, I think if you got one of those and then just put some, the you fuck? know, just drop something on it, similar to what, uh, I'm forgetting his name off the top of my head. He <laughs> came on Drift Week with the the drift truck. Um, oh, dude. Oh. Nice, Dustin. Dustin yeah. Hash. Mm-hmm. Dustin Hash. Is that right? That's Shout out, right. Dustin. He's an amazing, amazing human being. Um, but yeah, like his truck. I think that stuff's super cool. Hell that yeah. stuff is super cool to me. I like, hate that I the like truck that. scene kind of died out. The lower has truck it? scenes. Like, oh, has you, it? you don't really see lower truck slam trucks anymore. And I'm definitely, like that. I've definitely been following some pages since I've been over here. Really? <laughs> yeah. You'll still I had... catch them every once in a while, but dude, they used to be everywhere. Because we, for people that don't know, we bought an Escalade when we came over here like two years ago mm-hmm. and that's what we've been driving around and like I've wanted to like air back that thing so bad and then we had it it finally broke uh, on a trip recently and we ended up buying a, a F350 yeah like I so badly wanted a Julie a two wheel drive Julie because the dream is to have a slam yeah. Julie is like one of the best things you just ever yeah. see in my opinion anyway like awesome there could be Alcoa's. supercars sitting there Perfect. the Bentley drift cars and anything you like, like there's a slam Julie there, <laughs> like right that's over to where the my attention is, <laughs> for real. Like that stuff's so freaking cool Hell to me, yeah. anyway. Okay, well, cool. That's definitely unique. I kind of grew I've up in trucks that first, like act- semis. You know what I mean? I, yeah, because my dad would drove interstate. Yeah, so, I don't really yeah. know much about semis. Like I, I've been inside of a couple they of look them, sick. but dude, yeah, they look cool. They're just <laughs> impressive to me, just to stare at honestly yeah. or just kids it's a big truck with lots of lights and chrome <laughs> lots of lights you can live yeah. in it there's a bed a fridge <laughs> yeah video games all of that sort of stuff i think that's sick like the truck scene over here is insane yeah like the semi truck stuff like in australia they're so restricted they can't do any cool stuff but over here like i get oh, a buzz dude. driving around when i see all the cool semis I absolutely love it yeah that turns my head in more than any fucking supercar or anything dude, yeah I'll, I'll see a slammed Big ass semi truck hauling yeah, so be a the gangster cr- trailer, big chrome, big chrome like, bar that's dude. almost on the ground, and you're like, yeah. like that's literally your job, and that's what you're doing for a living, but you're still being you're still gangster as fuck. Yeah. like that stuff's yeah. sick. I love that. Oh man, if you got one, drop it in the comment. Yes, yeah, DM me a picture of it because I want to see it. <laughs> They're so right. <laughs> um, all right, so let's let's get into the track. I guess um, let's talk about that. Where um, I guess where should I start on that? Because we talked a little bit about it. Yeah. Um, how long did you own it exactly? Well, I didn't own anything. Or, sorry, <laughs> that's yeah, sorry. probably the biggest Run thing. It. So the way it started is when I first. So I lived down in like the south of Australia, mm. um, and then I moved up to Queensland where the track was because I saw drifting happening up there everywhere. Yeah, and it just okay. it was better weather tons more drifting and i was like that's where i need to be because i was getting in trouble too much down south from street drifting and uh you know it was just needed to get out because you know i was just going to end up in jail from being an idiot on the street so 
you know, I moved up there. It was just drifting all the time. I got in contact with the guys that were running the track for, because it was a go-kart track and then they were running some drifting and there was okay. a third party guy coming in and running the drifting. I ended up, you know, working with that guy and I was just helping. I was there all the time to just help. Just, I was volunteering. I volunteered there for like eight years on and off. Um, like when okay. I was in, when I was in town, I was, you know, there helping out, whether it was teaching people, running the start line, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and then the opportunity came up where basically he was going to shut the place down. Yeah. Um, but then he's like, you want to take it over? Cause it, you know, he, he was bouncing and I was like, yeah, like yeah. I need to, cause we need this, like we need this place. Like yeah. this is a really important part of like drifting and we need it. You kind of just became the CEO of the track. You weren't yeah, the essentially owner, I took over the lease. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I took over the lease and it was like a secondary lease from the leaser. So we were like a third party leaser. Oh. And essentially they, it was leased to us as a car park, but it had a go-kart track on it, which then we extended, made wider. Yeah. You know, we, it, yeah. it evolved to what it ended up being. Um, it was very, 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 very stressful. Yeah. It um, looked like it. Because we didn't own it, you know what I mean? And and when we had the track get damaged and things like that, like every cent we're putting into the place, like you're imagine essentially, that. you know, imagine you had a rental car, you know, and you're not going to go fully modify a rental car, especially with the the fact that it could be taken back at any time. Our lease was for as long as they're there. So as long oh. as there was a speedway next door, dirt speedway. Yeah. And that was, we were there as long as they were going to be running speedway. And that's Damn. sort of how it ran. Um. So, you know, every cent we spent on the place was just, you know, f definitely felt like just throwing money away. Yeah. Um, and even uh, closer to the end, probably two years before we actually had to close, it was just at the start of COVID. Oh, no, so probably like three. You forget about those years mm -hmm. in the middle there yeah. where it was the pandemic stuff. Uh, but um, we spent 120, 110, 120 grand on putting a, a concrete corner in because the bottom corner, because it's a flood area, it just kept oh, sinking. Yeah, yeah. And and the bitumen or asphalt, whatever you want to call it, kept breaking up. Anytime it'd rain, it would just break up and mm. you know, we couldn't run events. Yeah. And blah blah blah. So we're like concreted it and it was just after I'd done Drift Week One and I got to drive a bunch of tracks that had banks on them and I was like, I need a bank. Yeah. <laughs> and I sort of it was definitely not a business decision. It was very much an uh, emotional. I, emotional. <laughs> I'm a drifter. I just want cool drifting things. So I went ahead. This is, we'd already done a Nikko drop because again, right off. <laughs> I went to Japan. I drove the Nikko. You know, I'd driven Nikko a bunch of times. I'm like, we need a Nikko drop. We put in a Nikko drop. I drove the bank. I'm like, we I need remember a bank. watching that video. Yeah. So, you know, we went ahead and did it, and then boom, COVID. We ran two events, and then we got shut down. Oh, and we got dude. shut down for months. It was terrifying. So it was nothing under your control. It was just no, it was government uh, basically. Yeah, and a lot of people really didn't understand the dynamic there with the track because, you know, we were trying to like raise money to do that big corner and stuff like that, and people would be like, "Oh, why don't you just sell all your cars and and do it? It's your business." Blah blah. blah. And it's oh, like, oh yeah, okay. Well, if I, I, if, I, 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 look this, if I look at this, if I look at this from a straight business perspective fuck you drifters yeah. i'm not going to put a bank in and make it cooler i'll just make it enough so you'll keep coming and just pay your entry like yeah the bank was to make drifting way better and it made it infinitely better like mm -hmm. it was night and day better because the, the thing is the bottom corner was a very tight corner mm -hmm. and when it was flat you had to take it like yeah depending on your car you'd go back to first gear it, it was oh, literally you're wow. turning back on yourself but then once it was banked you were hitting it three times the speed because you could just shit. hit it, and because it was banked, you just rip yeah, around it, was bringing it you back fast, down anyway. super fast compared to what it was. And it was all just a, it was an emotional decision to make it better for drifting. Yeah. And that's where my head was at, you know, and where a lot of people, I didn't see it from that point of view, you know, just because they weren't thinking about it from that point of view, you know, like, you know, oh, it's your business, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I'm making it better for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. For all of us, you know, that's my mindset behind it you know so if it was a strictly business decision i just would have put concrete over the bit that was wrong damaged and shit, yeah. and we just would have had this you know sort of 10 meters or so of concrete mm -hmm. instead we ended up putting a hundred and just over 100 meters 
length of concrete in super wide like that made drifting infinitely better there you know it honestly in my opinion probably made it two to three times more fun than it was before so it it just added that much dynamic to it so it, it was worth it but it was definitely like when we got shut down by covid it just it, it killed us emotionally. Like it, it really did put so much strain because you just didn't know. You're yeah. like, are we coming out of this? Are we ever going to, are we going to be able to pay this back? Like if we just completely ruined our lives for drifting mm. for other people more Dude. than anything, than it, more than ourselves. Like obviously I wanted the corner as well. You yeah, know, my wife wanted the corner. I wanted the corner. Like it was cool as fuck. But, you know, was it worth like not being able to buy a house because you've just put all your life savings into that, all that sort of stuff? So no, that was extremely stressful. And again, the whole place, the whole time was you potentially lose it. You know, we didn't have yeah. our lease was again as long as the speedway it was always was there. in the back. Of your so head. it was basically like a year at a time. We we were given. Um, so yeah, and there's always rumors flying around like this is the last year, this is the last year, and you saw like. You know, we've heard that a lot. Like we're co- we're, we're yeah. good. Like I'm I'm sure we're gonna keep keep going. Like you know, you, in your head, you're just trying to justify it in your own head that everything's gonna be sweet. Uh, yeah, and because it's you, something you don't even know. So like you're justifying stuff that you can't even factually. Yeah, correct. and the speedway <laughs> just didn't care. You know, what I mean, they couldn't yeah. give they couldn't give a rat's ass about drifting. Mm-hmm. They were just cared about their own thing. They, you know, they didn't care at all. So. Has to be expected. It, you know, we were the last people to find out about everything. You know, the news and stuff had Damn. been told about the place getting put for sale before I had ever found out about it. Yeah. And I'd have to email them like, Is that why haven't that petition you told came me? into play? Because you, didn't you put that, out a that petition? Was the, that was the noise stuff. The noise? Oh, okay. That yeah, was yeah, the noise, noise stuff we'd had previously. And that was, that was nothing to do with the Speedway. That was the council. But the ironic thing was the Speedway was so much louder than us. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like... I lived a 15 minute drive away. Yeah. And I could hear the speedway when they're on. And oh, they ran wow. until like 11 o'clock at night. Okay. And then we'd run drifting and you couldn't hear it at the end of the street. <laughs> like you could see smoke and you couldn't Every hear car the drift had cars. Pie cut, turn down, exactly. all sorts of shit. Yeah. yeah. We, we required everybody to run mufflers. Majority of people, if they thought their car was too loud, I'd always say like run a turn down. Yeah. Like a turn down will knock 10 to 15 decibels off it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, it might be loud right near it, but that will kill the sound mm-hmm. as far as it traveling. And yeah, so I think it was probably more a case of the Speedway blaming noise on us, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it is what it is. And we had a big fight with the city and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> extremely stressful. Dude. Oh, man. And this is where right now, like, so right now we kind of have our only income is sort of shirts and, and, you know, a little bit of, like, we don't make much on YouTube at all, but yeah. it's a little bit, you know, um, nowhere enough, but uh, we're just sort of living on savings at the moment, but I'm still, I'm so relaxed compared to yeah, what I was with the track. All stress is oh, just gone It was point. insane, you know, it was just only because it wasn't ours. Yeah. We own the land then whatever it would have been what still stressful obviously but way less stressful yeah it was the you know it's just getting dangled over us that we're going to lose it all the time that was the problem mm-hmm. other than that it's unreal we had some of the best times of our freaking life and remember it forever you know so yeah, yeah. that sucks dude because i'm sure own, like not owning but just being able to have that track whenever you want almost no no that was the other thing. <laughs> okay, so that was my. That's the question so I, I was never got, into. <laughs> I, so we would Our noise restrictions were super, super strict. We were only open when we we're open. I couldn't go down there and go and like have a test or Dude. anything. So we were only open when we we're allowed to open. So oh, that just makes it ten times worse. Our times that we were open were every second Tuesday from four p.m. till nine p.m. These times were retired. I'd like. I don't know who the <laughs> person was in the council that thought this was the the best time. To be running drifting. So every second Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, <laughs> every single Thursday from 4 to 8. So 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Then every second Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Dude, that doesn't make sense. 
why the hell are we not what just running fuck? Friday and Saturdays? <laughs> yeah. Like Friday night, Saturday. Like the hell when would come on a Tuesday, dude. Tons. That was actually really our, well. That was that was our big beginner night. <laughs> oh, dude, what? The so that's when everybody would like our beginner sessions on a Tuesday were were crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, man. we'd have like seriously like most events we'd have like forty cars on that wow. little track of beginners, like just packed. It's so many people dude. like coming there to learn and stuff. But, like it took a, a little bit for people to understand it and want to want to hit it but like yeah once people understood that it was a friendly place to like learn and you'll get tuition and it's cheap and yeah man we were busy as super busy all the time and that ironically was our most busy tuesday nights what the yeah. hell yeah but it's just it was because of what they were you know they were yeah. they were the beginner night that was friendly that was you know that you get tutored for nothing extra all of that sort of stuff so that yeah. more than anything i think was why not necessarily the day it was on but geez if that was like on a friday it would have been you know we'd have to would have had to do pre-entries you know in yeah. advance because you'd just fill up all the time so they were really dumb but that's i could only drive at those times as well too so i could go down there and like work. i would go down there and like work on cars and stuff but that other than that it was just dead yeah well i'll tell you what that definitely shows that you're you're not just in drifting just to for yourself, have fun for yourself. No, because I, I, I want everyone else to do it now, man. I want everyone else to do it. You know what I mean? And and especially, I think part of the stuff with my YouTube as well that I really, I don't know if I actively try and push it, but I'm, I'm very open with it is the fact that I do everything with my family. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, like Drift Week 1, all the Drift Weeks I've done with my whole family. Yeah. You know, Drift Week 1 was in a G35, four up, Boston was two two years old or three you know we basically Damn, did it with dude. a baby that's crazy with man. everything in the g35 like everything we fit everything inside the car and in the trunk with what was it you know i think she, scarlet was About four it. or five and yeah boston was like two mm-hmm. and we did you know we did drift week like that as a family that's crazy. um and all that sort of stuff and i definitely think it's like because a lot of people like oh when you have kids it's all over yeah when it's not, it, it like just pushes you to push harder and mm-hmm. you can, you can take them like your kids, uh, you know, just shadows of you really. They want to be yeah. like you. Like this weekend was fucking amazing. I got to, you know, Brandon with the boat as the boat yeah, drift yeah. car. So Boston, both my kids absolutely love that car. My daughter's a bit more safety conscious. So she didn't like the fact that it's convertible, Oh, but she wanted to tandem with the boat. So I've got my daughter with me, my, you know, my six-year-old. No, I bet as a dad, those are like the the better moments of drifting. Insane, like best moments. Yeah. I've got a nine-year-old sitting beside me. I've got my six-year-old in a freaking boat. (laughs) And it ironically was raining so much that the course literally looked like a lake. And I'm here literally putting tire on bow. Of the oh, dude, that sounds so weird. putting tire on bow of the boat and tanning me like like literally just like it was so freaking cool and I and my fiberglass son on you fiberglass can barely see like my son's head and he's in there just like loving life and my oh, my daughter's like just cracking up laughing because yeah. you know we're up against the side of it and because the Corvette's obviously a lot lower we're like under the bow yeah so like yeah. when I'm actually up against him. The bow's hanging right over my quarter panel, over my front my front panel. So it's like over my headlight, and my tire is like on the bow, but the part of the hull is actually over yeah, the top of my car. It's just like this. It's the weirdest <laughs> shit, but it's so cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Our kids were absolutely buzzing. Um, and shout out to him because he, uh, yeah, he took he took my son out multiple times because my awesome, son just dude. loves it. He just thinks it's the coolest yeah. thing in the world. Like most people, that thing's sick. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, that to me, that sort of stuff is sick, and it just shows it shows that you can do it. Like, take your kids, mm. like they'll love it. And the the biggest thing is, is like you get kids that get taken to the track, and they they have similar mindsets to all the other kids that are there, and yeah. they just run a mark and have the best time. And they, oh, dude, even they're the, the times you remember. Yeah, even I feel the like. noise stuff. Like, dude, I'll walk around like at LS Fest, walk around, you'll see a dog with earmuffs on yeah, because it's too loud. And then you'll see a fresh toddler, like brand new baby with no earmuffs, like just in a stroller. No, they won't. Shit. They want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. It's no. crazy. Well, that's, I think as a parent too, you got to be, 
aware of your lifestyle, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Um, we knew when we had our daughter, like me and my wife are both into cars, both like loud, fast cars. Yeah. That's our lifestyle, you know? So we actively, we went to top fuel drag racing. We went to a lot of dirt speedway, anything that was super loud. Yeah. Open header stuff while she was pregnant. Oh, okay. To get her used to it because yeah. they do learn a lot in the stomach. So yeah, like we were doing top fuels and all kinds of stuff. Crazy like. Yeah. Man, my daughter sleep through World War Three straight up. <laughs> both of them. Both my kids. They're getting ra- They could get ragdolled and they'd be still yeah. asleep. Like they <laughs> can hilarious. sleep through anything. You know, it's funny on Drift Week. It's Drift Week. You do the share. Everyone sort of gets into Airbnbs and stuff. Yeah. It's funny. I'm calling you out fielding. So Fielding set up and he wanted to be the party house and that's why originally we were going to be with that group and then he's sort of like, that didn't happen. Uh, I was like, okay, I see how it is. Like yeah. He's like, oh, you know, we, we got the party house. I'm like, my kids party harder than you anyway. What are you talking <laughs> about? Anyway, very first night of that last drift week, <laughs> where does the party end up? Our Airbnb. Ah. Fielding that rock over because the party's at our Airbnb. <laughs> So, um, yeah, look, definitely, definitely don't. Uh, and dude, the other night at the track, Friday night at the track, my daughter was like, where's the party at dad? Dad, like, yeah. let's go find let's who's, cool. who's got a fire going and a party going. Cause she's like stayed up wanting to go and just she's hang the out. Night owl oh family. yeah. Well, she just, she just wants to enjoy the good times. Yeah. She's only nine, but she's, you know, just has a great time. That's awesome. You know, so it, it's just. Again, they'll also sleep. You know, you yeah. can have them at a party and they'll sleep. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's uh, definitely the way you bring them up. And, yeah, I wouldn't do it any other way. Oh, My yeah. kids are awesome. They're super smart as well. Like, even though they have a bunch of time off of school, you know, we, we do a lot of work with them one-on-one, teaching them what my, my wife does. Yeah, uh, We do a lot of schoolwork still. Uh, when we're on these trips, but then when they go back to actual school, like, you know, they still kill it. You know, they yeah. both kill it at school still. So, That's you know, our principal and their teachers have absolutely no problems with them going away. So, awesome. we're pretty pumped on that, you know. Like, we feel yeah. like we're doing we're doing good parent things as well as, like, the life experience those kids have got. Well, that sets a good example for the community too, man. Yeah. Because I, I got a buddy that was on that they're in the middle of building a race track. Well, I guess they just finished building a racetrack. Uh, out in Alabama, and they've got kids. They're living in trailers, literally at the racetrack. Yeah, why not? Like, yeah, the kids don't know. Yeah, they don't. They don't give they're a camping. shit. They're camping. They're having they fun. They love it. Yeah, they got somewhere to sleep. They got food. They they're warm. They, they have something care. to brag about to their friends. Oh, absolutely. Oh, dude, dude come on. The vid- I had to get a video <laughs> uh, yesterday with my son because he's like, oh, my friends don't believe that I, I've been going in the drift car with you. I'm like. Bro, shit. I'm like for <laughs> starters, the if they're not watching this. the vlog, I'm like, whatever. I'm like, here, hold the phone on yourself. Yeah. And he's like, filmed himself. I haven't even actually watched the video yet, but he filmed be a, a run now. of himself. Oh, they try to anyway. My kids have a little <laughs> channel um, that they've been sort of mucking around with. I guess just because they watch That's me awesome. and they're funny. My daughters, so they watch YouTube as well. So my daughter's like, hey guys, like ah. you know, she's she's got it dialed already. But then she gets Get shy sometimes now. when I pull the camera out. Then other times not. She just overthinks. Dude, stuff. I'll be like, even as an adult, I'll be honest. When someone else pulls a camera out and I don't have control over it, I still get that butterfly feeling in my gut. I'm not too bad. I had the whole BMX career before well, drifting. That's fair. With, yeah, and, yeah. yeah, I actually hosted a TV show on MTV and stuff as well. Whoa, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it was uh, MTV Sports. It was like a BMX skate surf sort of show. Dude. So it was an Australian MTV, but uh, yeah, I was a host. We did ten episodes. No shit. So, yeah. Being in front of the camera for me was probably the easiest part of doing vlogging. It's the, yeah. uh, the editing that sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. The editing that definitely sucks. And I'm good at it somewhat, but yeah. it's just That's the bit that sucks. Process, it's finding yeah. time. Finding time with a family and everything else. So, oh, that yeah. side of things definitely difficult. Oh. Cat My cat's skits. got the zoomies. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, But there. The whole of what I was saying there is really just like, I like to get that across that it definitely doesn't stop because of family. You know yeah. what I mean? It doesn't have to, you don't have to put away the drift cars because you, you had a kid. Like the kid will be down. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? If the kid's not, they're gonna have more fun than you probably. Yeah, if the kid's not, you just make another one that is, and then <laughs> let let the other one go off and be a nerd or something. But you know what I mean? Like, no, just put him in daycare. They're gonna come day. around. <laughs> they're gonna come around. Like my daughter went right off of. So this is a crazy story. This is just just recently when I was in Ohio, right? So my daughter had a go kart crash years and years ago flipped a cart and my son when he was like two was in it with her and he got hurt just a big lump on his head mm-hmm. but it freaked her out and she's been anti-speed like anything crazy and super like we call her safety sally like you know we we call her like scarlet oh, scarlet super safe yeah and she was and then we're at my buddy's house in ohio and they're going around in side by sides and motorbikes and stuff like that. But it's a farm style side by side. Shout out to Aaron, by the way. Um, the one of his kids is driving it. Scarlett's passenger. They flip twice, like a crazy flip. Oh no! So Aaron's kid actually has a broken tibia and fibula from it. Like broke Fuck. his leg bad. Like crushed, essentially crushed his leg. Yeah. Um, Scarlett got out unscathed but obviously she was they were going about 40 Scared miles an shitless. hour flipped twice in like a big side by side like farm style as the tip yeah. thing on the back yeah um she's never been more keen to get in a drift car what I, she's like what the fuck she's like i think it shook the scaredness out of me ah that's dude. her attitude towards it and now she will like She's literally like was... battling my son to get in the car and they're having fights like who gets to go past <laughs> Shoving first. each other out of the way. <laughs> yeah, no, they're getting like there's no, there's tears and stuff about who gets to go first. Oh, oh my God. Um, so that's just wild. But she's come around, which I'm stoked yeah. on. You know, so you know, for a while there she was not anti cars by any means, but she just didn't want to go fast and do anything risky. Yeah. Where she's had this like crazy experience and now she's like uh, that didn't kill me, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm good to go. Yeah. This drift car has a roll cage. And I think that's why she didn't want to get in the that's... convertible one. Even though it had a half cage, but she was like, oh, it doesn't have a roof, so I don't like it. Yeah, you can't even see. In her yeah. eyes, she doesn't even see the cage. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's a interesting dynamic. And I think your kids are going to come around. Like, yeah, they're just surrounded by it. They're going to yeah. understand it at least. What are they going to do? Find another family? <laughs> like... Yeah, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Who else is going to pay for you? (laughs) Find one that's as cool as ours. Um, No. So, you know, they they appreciate it and they get to, you know, we still, we we spend time going to, you know, we go to some theme parks and stuff like that. And, you know, they still get to definitely, we we make sure we have time for the, for the strictly like kids days, you know, and they're, they're probably getting more of those days when we're doing these trips than they would normally. So Mm. it's, they're definitely uh, enjoying it as well. So. Good. Yeah. That's awesome to see because uh, I, I, I do hear a lot of people talk about that, how kids make your drifting career die. Not at all. I've never agreed with that. So it's it's nice to have someone with an actual perspective say that. Yeah. And it, it, it's important because kids are fucking awesome. Like yeah. they've made me who I am. Uh, and personally, I'm good on having a kid right now. I don't think I could handle it at yeah. the moment, but... But you adapt, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where it might not be the right time and it does happen and you're like, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll life, stick with it know. and send it and it turns out for the better because it does. It makes you work harder. It yeah. makes you, you know, you're not just doing it for yourself anymore. You're doing it for that little human as well. So that stuff is pretty rad Yeah, to me anyway. A little piece of you. Yeah. I've probably awesome. been more passionate because I've, nev- I've always done the comp stuff, but I'm not super... Uh, I wouldn't say I'm not super competitive because I'm definitely competitive, but I, I used to just throw away all the trophies. I've barely kept anything even from BMX because no they're just hard. Like right now in the yeah. truck. Well, I agree. My baseball trophies from my childhood are all gone. Yeah. Now it point. sounds even douchey, but like on this trip, I got a bunch of trophies and I'm just like, they're fucking annoying. Yeah. They're just <laughs> in like, the way in the truck oh, now. <laughs> man, it's, they are. They're just in the way and then yeah. you don't want to break them. And it's like, God, this is it. You know, over the course of a month and a half, I've got like some, we'd won a team comp at No Coast. We've done some other stuff and we're just, end, I think I've got like five or six trophies and then, oh, but then like, I've got like a check, which somebody, you know, you'd normally like put up on your wall and stuff. Like I'm using it to put between rims so I don't scratch rims, <laughs> <laughs> which is, you know what I mean? They, they're they just like. Oh, it's a safety pad at this point. <laughs> no, for real. It is. Yeah. We even, Dude, I know so there's cool. one of them, uh, you know, I guess shout out to to Link and um, 
they're supporting the LZ event, but yeah. uh, that that check there that we got, we've turned around and we use that for a price sign for like our shirts for some oh. events and stuff like that. So Wait, um, did you do that at LS Fest? Yeah, the last day. Yeah, was that the sign? Oh no, that was a different sign. But oh, yeah, okay. no, to say, same no start, way. same kind of thing as that because the LS Fest, uh, the LZ event was after that. Or yeah, damn, that is true. But same deal. Ford We'd Fest, done that. and I went to both. So this I was meant to go to Ford Fest. Oh. And it didn't work out. But one in that, the Fun Haver car needed a bit more work. And then I was up in Canada and gotcha. they, they're worried that we wouldn't be able to get the, the, the Fun Haver thing, the Fun Haver Fox done in time. So mm. I was like, it's not really worth me coming down all the way yeah. to RTR to pick up the car, to go there and then do that event and then go, take it back and wherever. Yeah, so that's fair. I sort of missed that opportunity, but had an amazing time up in Canada anyway. So can't complain. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, cool. Um, oh, I wanted to ask you this. Um, so if someone, since I have an RB in my Z. Yeah. So if someone was to come up to you and say that RBs are the worst engine, what would be your like short spill of why they're not? Because I know you like RBs. You're American. Because <laughs> America's work. <laughs> RBs, <laughs> RBs work yeah. great everywhere else. Yeah. Like go to New Zealand, go to Australia. Like there's sick RBs everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. You know what I mean? Well, like finally got some backup. <laughs> like seriously, a ton of the best RB cars in Australia are NA Neos. Really? They're nat they're naturally aspirated yeah. RB25 Neo motor, mm -hmm. E85 injectors, and a turbo, and you make five hundred horsepower to the wheels. That's great. And mine's not a Neo; it's a Series Two. But yeah, but you know. But I'm just saying, one like for. Just an example, those things, you can beat the living crap out of them. They're just an NA Neo. They're not an expensive, even now, that's not an expensive motor. Mm. Like the first thing people do when they get one of those, take them out, I'll put a put turbo motor in. It's like when you've got E readily available, yeah, boost it. Yeah. And they love it. You know, E85 loves high compression boosts. Mm -hmm. So send it. And yeah. that's a ton of really good cars back at home. That's what they run. Like a 450, 500 horsepower NA Neo. Yeah, with the car that just this came tons. out of, he said it was running about 450 on the Niz tune. Yeah, uh, and it's it's never been opened either, so it's got all the JD and Magic and shit in it. So yeah, don't let so yeah, yeah I ain't opening that motherfucker. Up. Yeah, but yeah, but no, they can be fantastic. Just I think it's one I've of those things where a lot it. of people trying to you know make 800 horsepower plus out of uh, them and yeah. all that, and you know same the same people that think they can do that with two <laughs> J's and they don't, you know. Yeah. You need to fully I hit like four hundred, and that's it. Like I yeah. don't really care. Four hundred for an RBs all day long. Yeah, all day long. Same with like your Jay Zs and all that. Like your one Jays more than anything. You know they'll yeah. happily just do four or five hundred all day long. Yeah, you know as long as you got a good tuner at the end of the day. Yep. So I've actually literally watched him at Beach Bend go around that layout on limiter the entire time, and it just took it no problem 100 percent. loved it oh i did an rbs 14 once and i treated this thing like dirt <laughs> like absolutely i remember there was this so we have a thing called power cruise at home and it's all like you know 1200 1500 2000 horsepower cars cruise around and then yeah. we were doing some drift demos but it ended up raining so none of these cars can go out in the rain they're all show car level yeah cars yeah. you know i don't want to have them out in the rain anyway so we got out and just got to do hours of demos. I literally did hours of limiter. <laughs> like just ignorant. Like just <laughs> every gear, just limiter bashing yeah. and just, you know, putting on a show for the people, but just absolutely running a monk. No cool down laps, no nothing. Just beating the shit out of it. That's and it awesome. loved every bit of it. Yeah. It loved every bit of it. And that's what there's tons of RBs at home doing that. Yeah. You I, know. Dude, I just wish we had more here. Yeah. That's that's the only issue. But the 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 um the Jay Zs make more sense here just from a packaging point of view because of the left hand drive. Mm -hmm. That's where I see things here, I guess. You know, obviously being left hand drive with an RB, you you having to route your exhaust around it. Where the two J or the Jay Z stuff at home yeah. is a pain because we're having to run the dump pipe around. Yeah. and deal with luckily it the, Z, with the, dude, the RB fits ten times better than the VQ. There's plenty. So of it's like. I didn't, I didn't have to worry about that. It was yeah. nowhere near the steering shaft or anything. So. Yeah, I considered putting a barrier in my 350. Yeah? Yeah, just because there's so much room. You can, so. Yeah. Oh, dude, I have it, it's excessive amounts of room, yeah. especially the top. I didn't realize how tall a VQ was. Yeah. Dude, there's like a foot until the the um. The yeah, really big heads on them, those motors. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah. No, the RBs are great. I think I think RBs are fantastic motors. It's just again people just pushing them too far, trying too many new stuff. Like I see Ryan Little's name over on your board there, so yeah. that's what brings it up. But you know, what I mean, I think half of Ryan's thing, I felt like he was doing a lot of like new stuff. And it's yeah, like he, he probably shouldn't have been doing new stuff on a comp car. You should have just done a, a tried and proven. You know, like three liter bottom end or three point. You know, yeah. stroke to three point two. With a you know twenty six head, you know happily make a thousand mm-hmm. reliable. You know, there's most of the D one NZ field is uh, that sort of RB setup. Yeah, you know between their their you know pro most of their pro spec cars are like that. You know these sick RBs, absolutely sick RBs, revving their heads off and yeah, oh yeah, they're not blowing up. Yeah, they're just ripping on them. I, I I talked to him about that myself too. I was because he he literally was just trying to push the limits, is what it seems like. Yeah, so. it's probably not what you want to do with the not car you're needing, RV. especially when you're traveling crazy distances to Spend go and how much money compete every be. weekend. Yeah, it would have been better to like do that stuff maybe with his S14 and you know put just a, a yeah. proven reliable setup in the S15 for the comp stuff, just so you could concentrate on driving. It's pretty yeah. shitty to see him always get stuck with like the car braking and things yeah. like that when it. Yeah, that's the way he wanted to do it. So whatever, it's yeah. all good. If it's if it's his style, then go for it. Yeah, but all right, we'll uh, we'll venture on into some of the sub questions. Uh, but Caleb, I haven't dude, looked at I these. will be interesting. Caleb Quanbeck, uh, talk about my BMX days with and Colony. Your days with Colony. I never dro- I never rode for Colony. That's what I thought. Yeah, no, I was volume. But I, I went ahead and put it on here. Just I was, vol- I was volume and demolition. Um. But Colony, the owner of Colony, we actually competed a ton back in the day. We had some of the oh, best battles. Like one of the more known ones was the f- I was the first to nine hundred on a mini, like on a, oh, wow. on a mini spine, like not on a vert. Yeah, and it was actually a, against Clint Miller, who owns Colony. We were just battling it out <laughs> this mini final, and it's one of these things. We went like thirty minutes over time, just, just. Doing Having all the sickest shit on this spine yeah. ramp. And it was one of the coolest events in my memory of like, you know, a, a BMX comp. Because it was it was jam format and it just yeah. it was just so escalated because it was just like one upping, one upping, and then it was like, yeah, I'm gonna try and throw a nine on a mini, and it was mm. unheard of at that that point. Um that stuff with with Clint, you know, we had some mega battles, so cool. Like Clint's a bloody legend and you know, Colony's absolutely killing it now as well, oh, like yeah. in Australia and everything. So, yeah, but I was volume demolition, oh, Vo- yeah. volume bikes, demolition parts for majority of my career. Nice. And um, okay. still to this day, I got volume at home. I got a volume drifter, actually. No oh, shit. The drifter frame. Yeah, it's called a volume drifter. It's not actually the greatest frame, but I just it was like, it's called the drifter and it just makes sense, you know? So yeah. I'm clearly not doing as much riding these days, guys. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm starting to have to, though. My son is a little ripper. He's, we actually go oh, to the skate nice. parks quite a bit now. So I've, dude, I've considered getting another bike. Yeah. I'm again. getting, I am getting back I into it at the it. moment. So it's, uh, it's been super fun. And again, just seeing fun with my kid you know what i mean he's yeah. keen like let's go to the skate park dad i'm like yes absolutely <laughs> like, dude you don't even have to ask me again yeah sign me up let's go so <laughs> and my wife loves me riding so that's good i don't know if it's just because i've got fatter or because she actually <laughs> likes watching me ride a bmx but yeah one or the other <laughs> you seem like you got a really good family dynamic man i like that oh uh, we do we absolutely do i got yeah. lucky a real lucky oh yeah that's the scariest thing about having kids is just are they going to be healthy and like oh i'm sure cool you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's honestly like our four, our daughter was so perfect. Like, <laughs> you don't want your kid to be a perfect. stick in the mud. <laughs> yeah, our kid was so perfect, and it was like we were so terrified to have our second one in case it was just like the opposite. Because yeah. you do see that a ton with oh, people. Like, yeah. they have one kid that's cool and one kid that's just a dick, and it's like, <laughs> or, or just you what know, like here? <laughs> you know, you do see that a lot. And we got two, we got two absolute little legends, and um, yeah, and my wife's pretty cool as well. So. She's, um, you know, generally down for anything. Stresses to hell, but yeah, oh, definitely yeah, sure. um, down, you know, yeah. down for the stupidity. <laughs> I'll call it the stupidity. Yeah, we're drifters, you know, it's part of it. <laughs> yeah, we'll just roll the dice and see if it works. Yeah. That's pretty much us at the moment. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, uh, Slow Boy Garage, uh, he hangs out with fielding, actually. Yep. Um, but he best and worst experience from each drift week you've been on. Um, 
best best would just be the the hanging out like drift week one behind like outside of the tracks was just sick yeah you know because it was such a small core group yeah you know of us so new and like there was enough of us where we were like a lot of the time we're all squeezing into one big house yeah so we were all together everyone's just hanging out and it was just such a cool thing to be a part of number one you know what i mean like like pioneers for it yeah essentially um but that that side of things was definitely really cool. The new, again for me, the new places. Like on that trip, I did some crazy miles. I actually, with my family, we we bought the car off uh, Matt Field's crew chief. Mm, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I forget yeah. his name. But we actually drove from uh, was it San Francisco? We actually went as far as Miami, and then back to Texas to start drift week. Dude, <laughs> that's that the kids to that's Disneyland. Brutal. Had to take the kids to Disneyland, <laughs> so that's what we ended up Priorities, doing. Priorities, you know. You know, um, but no, definitely the the meeting everybody and just the hanging out and stuff and the after track shenanigans and st- like the between track shit, like the yeah. a lot so much stuff that never saw the light of day. <laughs> so much good shit. I'm sure there's a lot of street drifting, and yeah. a lot of crazy yeah. stuff going on. There was a lot of good road. stuff, a lot of good stuff that didn't get to get shown. So that, and then probably the worst experience would have just been on again drift week one um i went to uh albuquerque we went to albuquerque went to dan's track and before it was dan's track Mm -hmm. and when i had when i bought that g35 it blew up almost immediately the first day i ever did it it blew up so we put a new motor in it and because it was i see that a lot because it was a rev up motor we put in it because so DE, it was DE before, and then we went oh, okay, DE yeah. rev up. You had to change the ECU and go, or get a tuned one or whatever. And I specific, I had like, I even if I seen this guy now, I'd probably punch him in the face. I specifically said, I don't want any dumb shit. I don't want launch control. I don't want puppy bangs. I don't want oh, anything, and you know, anti lag or any the shit they yeah, put on all their the G's stuff, that pop yeah. bang and just make it run right just i just want a tune in it so it works yeah and just runs sure enough this fucking guy puts in just a copy paste one of his tunes that has all the bullshit in it first thing i do as a drifter is put a normal steering wheel on it so i can't switch through the maps anyway <laughs> so for some oh, reason dude. we're at albuquerque and my car like I'm getting to like 4,000 RPM and it starts to like cut, pop, 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 bang, starts like cutting out. I'm changing out like all the sensors. I'm like, and it was super windy, super cold, just like shitty yeah. day yeah. to be outside of the car and working on it. You know, you don't want to work on your car at the best of times. Yeah, no. The best sessions were going down on this track because the track's super fun. We were just having like, when the car was working, it was freaking epic. You know what I mean? And I remember having like a proper hissy fit and I threw my helmet. <laughs> I dented the roof with my helmet. I threw my helmet at the car, just like losing my mind because this car just wouldn't work. And what it turned out being is the guy had let put these dumb tunes in it. And I guess at some point, somehow, whether it had got like a little battery jump or something had yeah. happened, it had switched to a tune that has launch control on it. And the clutch sensor was, at, I guess, the clutch had a little bit of movement in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it would think that the clutch was engaged oh and yeah, hit a four grand limiter sensor right behind the pedal so it's like a four grand limiter they will be like i'd get up to like four thousand rpm and i'll bop, 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 bop. but i changed everything in this car like we were oh, going to town dude. to get parts and it just it did it ruined my whole day and i was so upset because i just wanted to drive it was just yeah a really good session that i missed out on and i was oh I, <laughs> genuinely if that guy was there i would have killed him Dude, I was just so upset. That would have pissed me the fuck off. Yeah, I had to, and it was only because it wasn't as anything I did. As possible, and as I and that's the thing. I was so I was so specific on yeah. do not put any bullshit in here. I don't want any of it. I don't want flames. I don't want pops. I don't want anything. Yeah, just tune it. Just put the tune in it so it works. I don't even need it to go faster than a stock one. Just <clears throat> do whatever so it works. Yeah. So that was my worst experience. <laughs> Literally, the only thing you need to tune out of a Z is that stupid delay in the in the throttle. Even that, that's I can, that. That's it. But it, yeah. that's not even that big of a deal. Yeah, even that I, get, I hardly notice. Deal it. with. It's just yeah. It was. Yeah, 
<laughs> that was damn emotionally <laughs> emotionally damaging. We'll put it that way. Yeah. I was so pissed off. That was definitely <laughs> that day. Yeah, both best and worst was on Drift Week One. Fair enough. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I would. That would honestly, I'd expect that with it being the first one, anyways. But all right, uh, Jack Lowlin. I think that's how you say it. I'm sorry if yeah. I fucked that up. Jack Lowlin, maybe. Jack. Yeah. Do I uh, plan on opening another drift track in Australia? Yeah. Sort of yes and sort of no. Um, not having the track now has been pretty freaking good mm. from a from a mental standpoint. And the only way I would want to build another track again is if I had a lot of ownership over it or or we we or someone we know owned the land and it was yeah. like solid. You know what I mean? So there wasn't there wasn't a in the ton background. of hoops to jump through. And yeah, it wasn't like a heap. Of, well, there's always going to be hoops, but more so, not you know something getting dangled over your head that or we'll take we can take it away whenever we want. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, that side of things is definitely sucky. So that you know that side of things. Um, but then also there's a there's a, just a ton of opportunity over here. So I'm sort of trying to make the jump to over here. Yeah. Do you so, ever see yourself like possibly moving to the US? Yeah. Fully. That's the goal. I wouldn't call it the goal. Like even I, I still see myself, you know, at when I'm an old, older, older, like an old man mm-hmm. back in Australia. Um, cause I quite enjoy, uh, how, what do you call it? You guys call it essentially camping in the outback. Uh, overland, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Overland. Overland. So I quite enjoy that in Australia. Like we got so much of Australia that's untouched. We're the same size as America, but we've got less yeah. less population than New York. So that's crazy. You know, there's a ton of untouched wilderness out there that's just like crazy to explore and you know, wow, go sit dude. up in the rainforest in a in a creek. I haven't gotten know, to do river. any type of overland type camping. Yeah. But I used to love camping yeah. all the time. Just Enos, tents, just cruise up in your truck. Yeah, exactly. So that probably you know that might be something in the future that i end up just doing around america as a as an old man i'm just <laughs> i think but while you know i can happily you know all my reaction times are absolutely still there you know like yeah. i can still drive the shit out of a car and i'm still having so much fun i'm having just as much fun now as i did when i first started drifting yeah you know You're just my, riding the wave yeah i just basically it. bloody enjoy it and if i can you know, ultimate goal is to find a way to make, you know, that's why I'm finally doing a proposal thing because it's like I need to find, you know, businesses that are aligned with a mindset of just like being at every event. Like, you know, if I had the funding, you know, I would love every week of my life to be basically what I've been doing for the last month and a half. You know, I've done seven, eight, nine, uh, eight drift events. Yeah. Uh, over like 16 drift days. No, 15. 15 drift days in the last sort of seven weeks. I've had one Dude. week. I've had one weekend off of drifting and yeah, I've even done some do midweek drifting. But it's like if I could have that sort of, you know, paid for and then do content and stuff, that's the dream for me. Yeah. Um, comps are absolutely fun as well. I definitely want to do some more stuff like that. But yeah, I'd need a better car. If I was gonna bother doing the cash kings, the, all that cash events, yeah. only because people, I think those are dying out anyway. Keep smashing into me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I'd rather something that I'm less um, concerned about, you know what I mean? That people could run into and be be less want to punch them in the face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, for lack of a better a better word, you know what I mean? Like. Something less... that I can be a nice person. Yeah. In. Like when I had my Z and you ran into me, I was like, ha ha, sucked in. You ran into me. You know what I mean? You wrecked your car. You hit I don't the door, care about it doesn't mine. even do anything. Yeah. I don't care about mine. You know, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And not that I, because I don't care about it, I don't go crashing into other people, but it's, you know, that, um, yeah, I care a lot about the Corvette. I'm not trying to scratch it. I like it when it's clean. Yeah. Like I don't even like Again, it. Again, it's a supercar. I don't even like <laughs> the stickers on it. I think it, I like it much better without stickers, but you know, we've got some guys that are helping along and mm. I'm super happy they're helping. So yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Ideally I just build something else that's, you know, a bunch of tube in it, you know, build a Corvette like not necessarily like Taylor A's, but you know, that sort of mindset of, you know, a full comp comp style car. Yeah, yeah. Rear mount radiator. Yeah, know, rear mount, bar work, things where, you know, you can get two feet into something and not be breaking anything. Yeah. So that sort of thing's definitely uh 
better for that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. So I'd like to be doing a bunch of that as well, but definitely, you know, this, I feel like there's a, there's a space, there's a, there's a space for that style of, uh, sponsored driver. You look at skateboarding and BMX and stuff like that. Like there's a ton of successful, you know, guys that are making a living, not doing comps. Yeah. Just going out uh, and doing video stuff and just going to different think jam that's where events. Moving. Yeah. That's where I, that's where I, you know, want myself to be. That's where I see myself more than anything. Um, but again, I'd love to have that. That's where the crowd sees you more than anything. Yeah. That's, and that's what I think is the most valuable part. Yeah. Well, it's only because you can send, you know, again, when you hear Chelsea talking about uh, FD and they're the conversations I have, I've had with Chelsea for years, you know, where <laughs> pretty much whenever Chelsea wins, I'm sort of like, so stoked for you to win. Your driving yeah. sucked. Because he, you know what I mean? He, it, it's wound down. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. instead of being on 10, it's on like eight because that's what you have to do to win. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, it's always better. You know, he's a homie. I want to see him drive at 10. Yeah. Whether win Agreed. or lose. You know what I mean? I always feel more, even if I, I feel more content getting knocked out early, driving like really good and really cool mm -hmm. than I do winning a lot of the time because you have to sort of, you do, you have to tone it down a lot of the times to yeah. win. You have to be consistent. You have to like not, you know, add that X factor because they could look at that X factor negatively. Yeah. Except. You have to be so dialed. To yeah. Tea. Which I think is a conversation which I had with Lucy about why I like, like my sort of favorite drift series to watch mm -hmm. is the RDC because it seems like they like that X factor and the guys are like, you see it and they're yeah. sending this shit out of it. There's no, there's no doing an eight. You know what I mean? Yeah, Every yeah. run's a 10 and you know, like it, a lot of time ends spectacularly. But a lot of the time ends up being super cool, I think, mm. to watch. And, you know, I mean, their courses that they use are, you know, pretty sick courses as well. So they really lend themselves well to that style of full send. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I like to just be able to go hard as hell, you know, yeah. and do what I want to do um, from a more freestyle point of view, because that's sort of my background is the freestyle stuff. So. Yeah, it suits you the best. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Well, uh, the last one I got is three underscore Sean underscore two. Uh, just tips for tandeming. So newbies, if they're starting to learn how to tandem, what what are some main things they should probably focus on? You and your homies go and get shitty cars, and beat each other up. Nice. Yeah. The biggest the biggest hurdle of tandeming is not being scared of damaging the car. Mm -hmm. So that's what holds majority of people back from getting close is they're so scared of damaging their car. And the ironic thing with it is, as everyone knows, death gap. You know, yeah. the bigger the gap, the harder the crash is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, Damn, it's a, so a catch-22. But it's definitely a um, a situation of get shitty cars and drive with your friends. Mm -hmm. You know, get a couple Zs, get some freaking... Get some, uh, what are they called? We're talking about it for the Ford. Fucking Miatas, dude. Yeah, Miatas, absolutely. Um, Miatas and take them out in a the field. Yeah, that. even, absolutely. Just anything, like practicing your transitions on, on, on your buddies, yeah. but with cars that you don't have to care about if you wipe the bumpers off in a transition, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then you can learn to commit, you know, committing to transitions. That's the biggest thing in tandem is transitions. Yeah. Is timing transitions and committing to transitions. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like That's one thing that I still have. Coming through, you know, essentially on. through the back of, you know, just that, that yeah. through there. Timing is, it perfectly to yeah. where it's the same exact. Yeah. You know, little scrapes on your front bumpers because you're like. Mimicking. Like, That's the word I was thinking. Yeah. Because my, my 370Z, like the whole, I've got scrapes all over my headlights and front bumper from just yeah. like. Just rubbing the back bumper. Yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. With the homies and whoever else. And yeah. And I guess. Uh, from a comp driver point of view or someone aspiring to do comps, don't just chase people that are good. The yeah. biggest, learn like chasing good people is easy as hell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, you can nail that down pretty quick. Chasing the best drivers in the world is super easy. Like for me personally, the easiest person in the world to chase is James. Yeah. Because he's super duper consistent. You know, he's the machine. He does the yeah. same thing. He can do it lap after lap. He does like just enough. And it's like, like yeah. you know, he's, up there don't get me like from a when i say just enough it's like 
he does enough where he doesn't have he does so good that he doesn't have to add the sprinkle on top but you know exactly where he's going to be so chasing him wise you know where he's going to be you can commit a hundred percent where someone's sketchy you can't fully commit to which um again only because i watched ft while i was driving last night so it's fresh in my mind where i think not saying that um that Novak was a bad driver by any means but he was a lot slower mm, yeah but had completely screwed everybody everyone just crashed into the wall behind him oh yeah yeah because they just couldn't handle the fact well they couldn't adjust the fact that he was slower yeah and that's something i like at home especially when i had the track especially like on a big ass track like that yeah so a ton of my tandem practice is with people that are sketchy and learning how to avoid as well like that sort of stuff like is so important mm-hmm. you know learning to avoid in, in shitty situations just simple shit like when you spin out like i'll if i know i'm gonna spin out for starters like the moment i hit lock and i think i'm gonna spin i'm like trying to get eye contact with the chase car or literally yeah. like waving at them or something to let them know like i'm in an oh shit moment yeah and then as i'm going through that i'm thinking how can i get the furthest out of the way and whether that's staying on throttle and driving yourself off onto the infield or whether that's looping the car and as you're looping it smashing reverse and just fucking flying off backwards yeah. you know that's Super that's what, duper duper important in drifting because that's where all your damage comes from majority of the time. Exactly. And that's one thing I tried to help a lot of my guys with at home with learning is like, if you are spinning out, get the hell out of the way. Because um, we, we got stuck at a, in, a, in a situation on the weekend where a guy lost a... We, we're in a five or six car train and we're two corners away from where this guy was and I could see him off in the distance. Yeah. He's like got his front bumper stuck under his car and stuff and he's sort of backing up and I'm I flick into the next corner I can see the guy and they're still mucking around with it and I'm like like surely he's seen we're all coming yeah and sure enough we go to I'm like looking I'm watching and I I flick and I'm like he's still there and I've like chucked my arm up and I went right up against his car between his car and the wall my buddy he could see enough as well and he came in there. Then the next car bumped me. Then he got rammed into, and it's like, oh, but God. this guy was what like, did you expect, wor- but this guy was like worrying about his bumper. It's like, get off track. <laughs> like, if your bumper's under the front of your car, reverse, go yeah. backwards really a fast. A couple hundred dollar bumper isn't going to replace a five, six thousand, ten thousand dollar car. Well, it's well, and the rest of the people that you've that too crashed behind yeah. you, yeah, because the the guy at the back, well, he didn't actually wreck his car from the crash but he was obviously pissed about the situation dumped his clutch to take off and blew both his axles oh, <laughs> that's one of the boys that was in the train with us so but yeah get off the track you know that sort of thing i think yeah tandem and it, it, this is tandem related because it once you are tandeming with the boys and having your fun it's learning how to get yourself out of those shitty situations that yeah. do happen you know especially I, once it gets in the train i just had some newbies some fairly newer people on uh from texas yeah. they they run a lot of the lone star drift events and the texas um uh drift academy or police academy whatever it is um uh, and they i asked them specifically what do you do whenever you think you're about to spin and they were like uh, uh i guess just clutch in right Try and stop and That's make sure worst. that I was like, fuck, no. I'm no. glad you have no idea right now because I'm about to let you know. Yeah. That's oh, no, like, clutch is the worst. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dude, if you do that, you're literally taking up the entire line. And so that car has nowhere to go. They either have to let off, dive in, and hopefully they don't hit you with the rear or yeah. they got to somehow do some weird no. mimicking move to get around you the other way. If they're following no. you in any way, stop shape, on it, spin properly, all the way they're out. hitting you if yeah. you clutch in. Yeah. So, yeah. In a lot of cases, to some extent, stay on throttle or, you know, loop it and snatch reverse and get the hell out of yeah. it, you know, as safely as possible, obviously. But there's a ton of situations where I've, like, known I'm going around, like, like clocked in on lock, known that, no, nah, this is not where I need to be. Yeah. It's, it's a hand up, like, you know, trying to let the boys know yeah. <laughs> that shit's going bad and then... At that point, like knowing where I am on the track and literally just smashing the thing in reverse, just whop, 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 off yep. the track backwards, like ripping. Because the there thing are off the some track. of those moments where you you spin too fast and you're just still going in the same direction. Yeah, there's no you just slam it into reverse, like you yeah. Said. 
And the thing is, because you know, you know when you're gone. You yeah. know what I mean. So you, you've got it. Uh, you definitely want to practice ten wise having that time. Like yeah. I would go as far as to say, go practice it. Yeah. Go practice spinning the car out, out and out working out how to get out of the way because yeah. it's super. It'll save your car. You know the amount of cars that get just. Dude. You know, they spin out, they come to a stop, and then there's a car. I've taken six out a car lengths back before. and and then just bang, those mm. huge crashes that you see. And it's like instead of sitting there, you could have banged reverse and just reversed two car lengths off the track and you'd still have a car. Yeah. You know, and so with the other dude, even though the other dude probably should have stopped drifting or should have seen you, shit doesn't always happen like that. You know, they might have been, yeah. you know, piecing the a cameraman and not tandem. seen it. He's got a lot to focus on being in the back. Wait, so. I nearly I nearly put my car in the wall this weekend uh because I was talking to my daughter. <laughs> We're in tandem and my son was in my buddy Max's Corvette and I was talking to my daughter. I'm like, can you see can you see him? He's back there. And, <laughs> and then I look back and I'm like, oh shit. Oh, we're a and little like, closer. <laughs> you know, tucked away. But that could have easily, you know, a situation like just say for instance there was a car there. Like I did look further around the corner. I yeah. knew there wasn't cars there. But that's those sort of situations you need to be aware that the car on track might not see you. Mm. Don't sit there and wait to see if they've seen you because at that point, it's already too late. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Drive off the track, run your bumper over if you have to. It's better than fixing your whole chassis yeah. or replacing a chassis. So that's definitely solid advice for tandem stuff because it's, it's all about, you know, it's all the same sort of thing. Like they're all the things that, you know, drifting on your own, you don't have anything else to worry about. You know, you're just trying to get around the track. Yeah. Maybe trying to get to clips, that sort of stuff. You're not having to worry about, you know, the car in front, the car behind or anything they might be doing. Once mm -hmm. you get into tandem, you definitely need to be very, very aware of a total other dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's good advice. So I appreciate that. Well, I got to ask you this question because it happened. So I'll get ringed if I don't. Are you going to take the Nofa spot? In an FD. Uh, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I feel. I like, I I don't know. I don't Especially know, maybe, with maybe, how much we've talked about FD. Like, I know that's not anywhere maybe near your. Maybe Vaughn will surprise me. I don't know. I'd love to. Don't get me wrong. I would. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I can drive anything. You know what I mean? Not. <sighs> and this, uh, this is going to sound bad, but James has always had sick cars. You know what I mean? Not yeah, always. Dude. Obviously, oh, yeah. started out, but. I met James when he was 15 years old and he had a gangster S14 with an RB. It was RB, I'm pretty sure, when he came and did Red Bull. I can't remember. No. But you know what I mean? Like, his brothers are phenomenal car builders. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you want a 2J, like, send it to those boys. You know what I mean? Like, they build amazing cars out of this little shed. Like, it's so cool. But, like, his cars are sick. You know what I mean? But then driving into something that doesn't do what you want it to do, you can see the struggle. Yeah. Where I feel like I could definitely adapt because I'm used to driving stuff that doesn't work. Mm. So I feel, you know, like that would make more sense to me, you know. Um, I can get my head around, definitely get my head around different weird stuff quick. Yeah. You know, I pride myself on being able to just jump in anything and drive it. Yeah. So well, definitely I, proven that. Yeah. I feel like that would be cool. I, I just like, I, I would like the opportunity to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I'd love it. Well, now and it's out there, Vaughn. Yeah, if you want, I, I, I did send him a message. I said, "Put me in, coach." <laughs> I don't know if he's seen that message yet, but um, I did send him. A I sent him a text the other day. Uh, but me and Vaughn go way back as well. Since yeah, probably oh eight, and I've I, dude, I went to Vaughn's house in like two thousand ten, yeah. like rallying around, and his old house had a quarry behind it, like rallying out the back there and stuff. So I've known Vaughn Damn. for a long time, and you know his wife, and you know his his two kids now, and. Yeah, with Mike, last time I went and hung out with him, which was last year, you know, the kids bombing down the hill on, yeah. on the on the toy cars and stuff like that. So, we definitely have a relationship. I and I don't know, Vaughn, I'm down. You know, yeah. it's hard because, again, I what you were talking about, I'm seeing probably is more of the not... I, and that's the thing, I'm definitely not anti-FD. Yeah. I just... It's very, very hard for me to justify my own money and... And then you've got the other side of things where I've never done a proposal thing. You know, I haven't done that side of things. And that's such a huge part yeah. of Formula Drift is the business side of things. Um, and I sort of, I know how to do business. I just feel bad asking for stuff. Mm. You know, it's the way I was brought up. You know, you weren't, you didn't ask for stuff. You know what I mean? If oh, you yeah. were, you know, 
with my BMX sponsors, they were people that, that came to me because they saw what I was doing and wanted to be part of it. And mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like that, that was because they saw the value and it's, it's different in drifting. You know, you, ha you have to show, you got to prove the value. you have to show their value because they're not looking necessarily looking for it because they're getting, you know, proposals every other day, Saturated multiple, shit, yeah. you know, um, and they're not necessarily looking for it. They're more so getting, copying it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that side of things is something I need to sort my shit out and do. Um, if I want to keep drifting, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm already married, so I can't find a sugar mama. So, <laughs> yep. yeah. Yeah. Screwed on that one. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I just found a wife that's awesome, not rich. Damn it. <laughs> You can't up. have them both, baby. Yeah, you probably can't. I don't know. Can you? <laughs> don't, let, don't look at me. I don't know. Yeah, you got a girlfriend <laughs> as well. You're trying to get yourself in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it, it's uh, yeah, definitely something I'd love to do. And I would, I'd love to drive the Mustangs. I think I, I drove all the the brand new one just recently. Nice. Uh, nice. The 650. Um, 650. Yeah. At, uh, uh, in Atlanta, Vaughn and was there and i just turned i'd come and caught up with him and he's like threw me the keys i'm like cool <laughs> but that was that brand new on the electric e-brake and stuff yeah the factory yeah. one that thing's sick oh yeah dude it's very impressive so good yeah like actually so good it's not even like a they've done such a good job like it, it had coil it had i think fun have a coilovers i guess they do coilovers now and it had their lock kit and that was it other than that the car was stock and it was sick <laughs> like Fuck yeah. actually like crazy how good it was you know it's like why would you you just go to the showroom and get this car and then just put Drive a lock kit and coilovers in it and it's one of the best cars you've ever driven it's plenty of power crazy. shifts beautifully i didn't even use the e-brake you know <laughs> I, I kicked and flicked and i forgot to use it yeah but even when you feel it it feels like real linear like it, it, it tightens as it goes up yeah, and yeah. if you want to like not lock, you can actually like it is linear. Wow. Yeah, because I felt I, I was trying it before I got on track. Like as I drove up to the start line, I was sort of like feeling feel what it, it would yeah, do, yeah. like whether it would be like like clamp or whether it was actually like linear. On, switch. And it does. It's linear. It That's it just crazy. like it smoothly goes on and it, like and this thing's cool. <laughs> like the seats were fantastic straight up. It's like this is going to be the future. Like things straight out of the box. Yeah. You know, a sick car. And when you've got, you know, a team like RTR with Vaughn, you know, giving influence to them. Yeah. yeah and they're listening. You've got this crazy worldwide co company listening to stupid drifters. <laughs> you know what I mean? Us idiots. And they're thinking it's a good idea. Same. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's happening more and more. The 400Z, same deal. I'm going to run to the bathroom. Yeah. Right. Uh. So yeah, how is how is it linear? You said it's electric, yep. so it just has like a pressure, I assume. I guess they literally got technology from Sims. Oh, so stuff. Oh, they use technology from Sim Guy stuff and no way. use that for the car. It's like a video game. Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah, which is super wow. sick, right? Like, yeah, isn't it wild that essentially guys playing video games? It's now that technology that they're using to make a video game feel like a drift car is now being put in a factory road car to feel like a drift like it's insane that's isn't it crazy yeah like that's factory that's that's so freaking cool oh, so i'm dude. saying you need to do nothing they put a lock kit in and coilovers and it was a freaking sick car yeah which is insane like isn't it like it's just and it worked flawlessly the car didn't get hot heaps of revs like the engines in those things are very cool oh yeah they're so um yeah just very very cool that it's something just off the showroom you can do that with and they look way better in person they do they do yeah, yeah. i really didn't when the six, i hated the it s650 came first... out well it's like a half camaro half mustang thing going on yeah the rear but then in person it looks it does look really good in person yeah which is cool so yeah i don't know i'd love to drive it i'm i'm not any i'm not i have no uh you know affiliation you know to to any brand i love my jdm stuff but i'm not a super jdm fanboy and i absolutely have to as you can see because i have a corvette you yeah, know? yeah um you know i just like to drift so whether that be in anything Cooper. and i do you know what 
I freaking love foxes. And yeah, the one I really actually weirdly like, what do they call it? The, uh, I forget what they call it. It's like the series two of the more round shape. It has like a really cool front on it. <laughs> you doing cat? <laughs> Wait, give me two seconds. I'm going to bring a photo up because there was one at No Star Bash that was so freaking cool. Right. It's the a six, Mustang, but it's... The fox body? No, well, I like, I really do like, I like the fox belly, the notch, well, the coo- yeah, whatever yeah. you call those ones. The I like them. Fox body. But there's this other shape. I'm just trying to find it. But there was one at No Star Bash, and it was gold. I don't know. that It's just that shape I really, really, really like. Oh, this thing. That shape. What's that called? Oh, the New Edge. New Edge. New Edge style. I think that's so cool. They look sick. Really? Yeah, there's a lot of good looking ones Damn. going around. That's I, I personally like the Trunk Car Fox bodies the yeah. best. That's my favorite body style. Or Tell the me that S197. thing doesn't look sick, though. Yeah. I think that looks sick. I, dude, the front ends just look weird to me. Yeah. I don't know. Especially, <laughs> yeah. I'll put the picture up there too so you can see it. But, uh, that thing's sick. The, especially the round ones, the ones, the body style the right before, before that. Oh, no, that they look like that, but yeah, they're they like roundish. No. I hate it yeah. so much. They're not. But so these things, white on white, are one of my favorite looking cars. Yeah. Like fitted, fitted white on white, like a white car, white wheels, like good fitment and stance. Yeah. <laughs> I think that looks sick. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I couldn't care less about the badge they have on it. Just I think they're cool. <laughs> they look cool. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> awesome. Well, sweet. Yeah. Uh. Well, I guess we'll pretty much, I guess, close it out here. So do you uh give me your best piece of advice for anyone just getting into drifting? Best piece of advice is uh, get a really good job. Yeah. Get a job there so you, you have go. more That's money. Advice. Or start a business so you have more money to do all the things you want to do. You know what I mean? Like that's at the the end of the day, it costs a lot. And the whole dream of being an FD driver Mm -hmm. and being paid and all that, like there's a handful of dudes that are, you know, making ends meet. The rest are going to work on Monday. You know what I mean? Like, or, you know, running their own business and all that sort of stuff. So it's like, it's not an unrealistic dream, but it's a very, you know, it's a, yeah. yeah, you you need to I have personally... a ton of money or a ton of stupidity. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Or or to other. put absolutely everything, everything, you know, which is again where you saw you saw Chelsea come. You know, it's it's funny because in '08 when I came into Red Bull World Championships, Chelsea was in the yeah the, yeah. the bottom class there. Where uh, and then you know he did he that de- absolutely dedicated his life. You know what I mean? That could have mm-hmm. gone completely the other way. You know, oh yeah. You know what I mean. Definitely. He was super committed and made it work. But it's like, you know, when you say committed, it's crazy, crazy good amount of you know amount of commitment. And same deal with even with the stuff I'm doing. You know, you've got a, it's so much commitment and so much more time invested than you even think. You know, even coming here, right, what I'm doing right Especially now, I was at this event career. yesterday. I drove overnight <laughs> to come here. <laughs> To have a chat with you, and then I'm gonna get back in the car and continue driving, all dump ways. all my stuff over in Vegas. Um, you know, I slept in the truck last night. I'll probably sleep in the truck again Damn, tonight, son. just in the back. And yeah, and I'm gonna fly up at a friend's wedding, and you, you know what I mean. It's it's That's crazy. It's Part not of this it though, yeah. Cra- it's not this. Um, you know, it's not a holiday by any means. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely a, a push, and you got to make a lot of stuff happens. So I'd say more than anything, if you can get yourself rich and then just be doing it all for fun, that's that's the ultimate that's really. The way to go. You have a business that sort of runs itself and have a lot of fun. I don't know why most people don't start a business just getting a drift car. All you got to just sell a couple of t-shirts oh, so at you can the ride event, it off. But yeah, your car and everything you buy for it is yeah, a ride Just so you can ride it off. Yeah, that's absolutely not a silly one by any means. But just, yeah, in general, I think making sure you have some money yeah is the best way to do it you know i was when i was doing all the stuff i was doing i was yeah didn't have a good job but i worked a ton of hours i would have been much better if i had been educated in something and been making really good money working eight hours rather than working you know 14 hours (laughs) to to make that sort of money so yeah i can't complain i've got to do the things i've got to do but yeah it's a lot of uh commitment and stuff so oh yeah yeah i would say just get a good job and maybe don't 
well, actually, probably the biggest one is just don't overbuild. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or if you're going to overbuild... Majority of people say that. Yeah, if you're so going to overbuild, maybe. have something there that you're still driving all the time. Mm-hmm. Don't ever like have a car and be like, I'm going to pull this car apart and, and build it into a pro car, which doesn't happen overnight. You know, have either start with a new chassis. Like for me, if I was going to build something, that's why I want to leave that as it is yeah. and keep driving. Yeah, but if I'm going to build something else, build it on the side. Up. Yeah, build it on the side. Yeah. You know, just throw a bit at it here and there because it doesn't need to happen as fast. So you're not rushing things and, you know, you're still doing stuff in your other car and getting seat time and learning more. Yeah. You know, you see so many people just get burned out by the build and and those people will go and get sponsors and stuff and all they'll promise sponsors things and all that. And then they finally get the car and realize that they can't drive it. And then they go and sell the car with all the sponsor stuff on them that burns the sponsor out. It, you know, it just, there's so yeah. many and you see it so often, yeah. like so often. A- every country in the world, like you see it. It's it's a universal thing, and and it's sort of the the it sucks. it's the greatest thing about drifting, and it's the the worst thing about drifting as well. That it is so accessible. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Anyone can. I always say it just because you got a pro car, you're not a pro driver. Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest ones. You know that doesn't. Just because you've got a pro car and you you can enter a pro event doesn't mean you can drive. You know what I mean? So, it's like spend more time driving more than anything. So, yeah. More time getting, you know, learn your craft more while you're building that car on the side. I say it's a huge thing, I think. Don't do what I did. Don't pull your main car down to build it. Yeah. You should have got another, uh, if anything, and you know, that's the thing. You could have got another Z... Yeah, roller for nothing basically like a water damaged one or whatever and started and that on the I, side i contemplated it and at the time i was i was like oh this I is just gonna want s- this rb in there yeah. it'll be sick it'll yeah. be done it won't take that long blah blah blah. and you know yeah i had a perfectly good vq i was pulling out with yeah. a perfectly good transmission i could have just slipped it into another car or just bought the shell to throw the rb in and yeah. not even mess with the one yeah. I had. stuck in the build yeah 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 so, and that is i agree with that that is a huge thing that is super common so yeah, yeah, that's my advice. Hell yeah! <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if you want, plug yourself, plug your people, anything like that. Um, just my socials, probably more my Instagram and YouTube. Go check them out. I try to put stuff up as much as possible with uh, the YouTube. Weeks like this week, I I miss out for like five <laughs> days, uh, because I'm traveling and stuff. But uh, yeah, try and keep up with what's going on, and yeah, hopefully see you at events. Don't be shy. Come say your day. Grab some of the merch, and uh, hopefully I'll be over here in the States full-time soon, so we'll see. Hell yeah, I'm excited for that. That'll be sick. Uh, actually, real quick, where do you pl- where do you want to move to if you do what move? What do I want to move to? Yeah, if you do move to the U.S. Um, I, I like Atlanta. Atlanta? Yeah. Oh, sick. I like the, um, a lot of the people, really mm-hmm. cool. The weather doesn't get too crazy cold. Yeah. It does get cold, but and then you're still pretty central, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's good for it's the not south. not too bad you get to get anywhere. access to all the tracks around. Yeah, but even... You know, even up to, you know, the Northeast, it's not really that bad. Yeah. As an Australian, that's not bad. Yeah. You know, our yeah, cities are at true. least 10 hours apart. So that's not too Damn. bad for us. So, um, yeah, I would say that around that area is where I'd like to be, um, where I'm ending up at for the start or for, yeah, I wouldn't say too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fair. All right, well, uh, don't forget, uh, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you are updated. I really do appreciate you coming on. You squeezed out the time to make it down here. Yeah, uh, so. we had chatted about it, and then I looked at the map. I'm like, yeah, we can make this work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that is pretty much it for this one. Uh, if There was one other thing that I remember, because you asked me a question about what would I change in drifting, and oh, it was... Yeah. I just thought about it then when I was taking a leak. So I do I do have an answer for that question you asked about uh, what are some things I would change in drifting. Um, I miss characters. Characters? How do you mean? So in professional, D1. Like okay. D1 yeah. back in the day was all characters. Yeah. And I think that was probably what drew me to it. Um, is, you know, you had Samurai this, when he's, you know, being the Samurai guy, you had, uh, n- you know, Nob who was, you know, the no one better. He was like the cocky race yeah, car yeah. guy. 
you know, you had monkey, you know, Nomakin, who was the monkey guy and all of that, like all of that stuff was so cool. Yeah. I miss that. You know what I mean? That's like, an interesting I feel like we're too race car guy and I think we need to be more X gamey. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, dude, I like, like that. Even your metal games. militia and, you know, all your metal militia, like Deacon, that's sort of where I, I, I met Deacon a long time ago yeah. and it was, it was a really eye opening for me when I met him because he was this big metal militia, like F the world, like rah, rah. But then you meet him behind the scenes and he was businessman. Yeah. He was not that, he was, that was a hundred percent like an a act. visual. And then he was a guy that was fully aware of what he was doing. And I sort of took that attitude into when I did that IDC stuff because I came in there gotcha. relatively unknown and I was like, there's one way I'm going to get myself known real fast. I'm just going to like poke the bear. And that's <laughs> yeah. sort of what I did there. And I played the bad guy, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And, you know, I played the bad guy and it riled the crowd up and, you know, we're in an event with, uh, it was the world, what was it called? The one where they bring in a ton of guests. Yeah. So you had Sato, uh, um, Turek, uh, Dean Kearney. Obviously, James was there, the Shadowhands. Yeah. A ton of big names were there. And I swear the whole event was just uh, the Irish versus me. That's, <laughs> it's like none of yeah. else, nobody else was even there. It was so cool. And it was just, it was just because of that whole, like, you know, that I, I changed it was, as it was when, um, Conor McGregor was, you know, really kicking off as well. I changed my Facebook to Conor McGregor, his picture, and I did all the stuff like that. And you know Dude, what? Dude, Ireland hates Conor too. It's hilarious. It, it riled everybody up so much. <laughs> but I, I did that because it was like, you know, anybody with half a brain knew what he was doing. You know what I mean? He was deliberately just poking oh, to get yeah. reactions and get everyone to follow because people want to follow it, you know, and see what yeah. happens. People like drama. Where... You know, that's sort of where I went with it. And, you know, good or bad, it was just an act to try and, like, get people talking and yeah. stuff like that, which it did amazingly. Like, it did fantastic at doing that. But I, you know, I'm not saying we necessarily need to go out and have a bunch of the, the being, people being the bad guy, but definitely I miss the the character side of drifting. Yeah. Which I think why Chelsea was so good in FD. For, like he was a character, you know what I mean? Whether yeah. he was, you know, offering someone off in the pits, but he was still always him, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I liked that. Um, you know, I relate myself a lot with Chelsea. We get along fantastic, you know what I mean? We're two peas in a pod, really. Oh, like yeah. We get around each other. Uh, so well. essentially, yeah, I miss characters. That's one thing I feel like in drifting that if it changed would be for the better. I think that would be super rad to have characters somehow built back into it. Even when FD started, you had that dude with the with the truck. He had the like I'm talking way back. Oh, it was automatic. Yeah. He had an El Camino. Oh my god! Yeah. Yes, like Bubba Gump Drift or something like that. Yeah, but they were characters, right? Like that was so cool. Yeah, it, like it that the, the attracts alive. you into it. You know what I mean? Like we can absolutely be professional and race car drivers but i feel like it would be so sick to really capitalize on personalities more yeah, the showman you know aspect. especially the fact that the vlogging side of things and the people side of things is so strong these days i feel like if they pushed harder into you know i guess getting a bit more of that across so you, you're following the person more than the car i guess yeah you know because you know you'd have you, you'd push more the fact that you know, Frederick Asbo is the sort of, um, you know, pin-up guy, like the the chiseled jaw the and his, and <laughs> his Mr. Handsome, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like that sort of stuff. Then you got Vaughn, his Team America and all that, you know what I mean? That, like that stuff, I feel like that could be really played on and make it a more interesting show in general, just for the people that aren't into it necessarily. Because mm-hmm. that, the characters is a good chunk of what made me get interested in Drift. Because it was just, I couldn't understand the Japanese. I don't understand. I only speak a tiny bit of Japanese yeah, now. Yeah. But it was just so entertaining, you know, seeing them dressed up and really getting into it. Um, you know, and it wasn't just, it wasn't even just the driver. It was, it was their pit crews, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And that they they got turned into characters. And I can see, one of the things I can see with uh, DMAC, DMAC, whatever it's called, the European series mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. they're, they're deliberately making a character out of the start line guy. 
Yeah. You've seen that? They're really, oh, yeah. they're creating a character. I think they're doing a good dude. job with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But they're turning that guy into a guy, you know? I think it's <laughs> not, sort of like- Not just an NPC. Yeah. But that's sort of like what they started to do with uh, Bill, the guy that used to go to Long Beach with the big beard. Yeah, yeah. They would yeah. stand right on yeah. the edge. They started doing that with him. And that's, I feel like that's something that could have been like a thing. Yeah. More of a thing. Andy Hardy, or not Hardy. Um, Andy with the E46. Yeah. Uh, Haley, that's his last name. Yeah. He's got that whole wizard thing going on. Absolutely. So he's kind of got he's a whole playing character thing. Yeah. He, but he eats it. How good would that be if that was like more portrayed, not just from him personally, but like. From FD. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, he's on, you know, they're not pushing Pro 2 as much as Pro 1, but imagine that same style of things, but in Pro 1, and he came out for driver intros in a freaking wizard suit yeah. and stuff. <laughs> that stuff would just create so much good hype. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's nothing negative about that. And I just feel like it'd that, be cooler. You're going to build the next generation of car guys. Oh, the kids will love that. All the kids that are coming to the event, that's what they're going to eat at. Yeah. They love the wizard guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just another dude in a race suit. They're like, it's like a WWE the, type of vibe 100%. for them. And that is, it's entertainment. That's yeah. all we're doing. Drifting's entertainment. It's not, we're, we're not showmen. racing. We're entertaining. We're showmen. We're, you know, I'd love to see that part of drift. If I was going to change anything comp wise, I would love to change that. Well, not Hell change yeah. it, but just incorporate it. I think it'd be sick to develop it more, you know, yeah. develop the banter between the drivers a bit more rather than, you know, the illusion that everyone's just best friends. Yeah. You know, um, opens up dude for a lot more doors of comedy to add in there too. yeah and but then you create oh, these mad rivalries that aren't just related to driving yeah you know what i mean like i i, th I think that side of things could be super cool to push the sport a bit more to the to the greater public because yeah. it's what attracted me to it i miss those characters of, of that d1 used to be like d1 to me has lost its way completely now i can't even watch it <laughs> It's like garbage. Okay. Their layouts and stuff they use are yeah. just, they're it's impossible to watch. You can't even understand it. It's, <laughs> it's something else. Um, not to say anything bad about the driving. There's still a ton of really good driving in there, but it's like the last yeah. one I watched. This, I do, the event doesn't set it up for the drivers. Correctly. Yeah. The last one I watched, it, it was uh, Scuba, where oh, they judged wow. two different sections and actually have a straight in between. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy that qualified first was basically straight lining the track, like some race line. And then the guy that qualified second Dude. was polar opposite. He literally did a backy mid track completely offline and he qualified second. And it was kind of close. It was like, how can anybody possibly follow that? Like not from a chasing a drift car point of view, but as a, as a person trying to follow the, the, the driving and follow the event, Yeah, you can't make sense of that. You know, like one guy did one thing, one guy did the complete opposite mm. and they got scored the same. Yeah. So that's why D1 is very hard and difficult to confusing. understand anything at the moment. But drifting in general, I think the character thing would be very cool to bring back. Oh, yeah. Well, good. I agree. So nice. I had to bring that up because it's <laughs> definitely, it's something that I think would make, you know, the pro drifting side of things really, really cool. Good. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're listening, I know, Ryan, you listen to these podcasts sometimes, so if you want to incorporate that in FD, go for it. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, again, that's that's it for this one. Uh, I'll go ahead and say it again. I really appreciate you coming. This uh, is thanks awesome for having podcast. me. Thanks for letting me have a shower yeah, and a yeah. coffee. Move I'll get course. back on the road. Anytime. <laughs> if you're ever in town again, just stop on by. Yeah, I don't but, think I'm swinging through here. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> it's a long way off the track. <laughs> it is, man. Yeah. It is. But that is it for this one, guys. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you're updated with every episode. But that is it. I will see you every Sunday with a new episode. Thanks. Peace. See you guys. Hell yeah. yeah I remember I was taking this. <laughs> yeah. Staying way up, up, up to the ceiling. Trust no bitch, can't catch no feelings. I've been taking long flights from the bay to Ibiza. Hit home runs, I'm a ball like Jeter. I just want fuck, 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 then I leave her. I'm a young pop star, call the boy Justin Bieber. Got a little money if you want, I can teach her. Whole life a movie, you can watch it in theater. Staying way up, up, up to the ceiling. Trust no bitch, can't catch no feelings. I've been taking long flights from the bay to Ibiza. Hit home runs, I'm a ball like Jeter. I just want fuck, 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 then I leave her. I'm a young pop star, call the boy Justin Bieber. Got a little money if you want, I can teach her.
with you. Whole life of moving, you can watch it in theater. We in the bag of the band. Shit like a sauna, she working a sweat. Told her come over, bring her and her friend. Go to the work, gotta earn in the rent. Fuck it so good, you should pay me for. Fuck it so good, you should pay me for six. Ain't one for relations, I don't in the next. Can't let her ho 